Block 6 I am a respectable ship girl, so of course I am not going to interrupt her work, we just needed to stay out of her sight. Damn it. I kicked a pebble, ouch. The pebble flew through a bush, and hit somebody, sorry, my bad. You idiot, do you even have an idea that it hurts? And how are you going to compensate me? A grumpy girl pushed through the bushes. I was considering myself lucky but then I was disappointed. The dragon milf looked at me, and rapidly started backing away. What were you saying about an idiot? Since I have nothing to do, I might as well bully a dragon. Like, self-assertion, domination, all that stuff. I even have a valid reason. Something insulted me, and now needed to be gunned down. It it was Jay just a slip of the tongue. The dragon tried doing cute poses but those don't work on me. Whiskey in a maid uniform with micro skirt may work but this thing is not going to look cute. No matter how much this horny thing tries, you have two options Tilda. You can either be my plaything until I grow tired of you, or I can blast you to pieces Tilda. Is this a choice? The dragon started bleating, to which I responded with aiming the main caliber. Wow. I'm blessed to be a few stormy mistress please don't kill them. With the dragon lying in the submission pose, on the back with limbs pressed to the belly, I started thinking what I even want from this lizard. R, to hell with it, just surprise me. The dragon started nodding like a fool. Then she started showing me some magic tricks, juggling, singing songs, and other stupid stuff. While it was a useless s show. I was at least entertained. Frustration was gone. At least until Iowa nags me to study tomorrow. V3CH78 A battleship rushed three torpedoes dived into the sea. The sound of their propellers was soon muffled by the sound of the torpedoes launched by the other destroyers. After the torpedo strike, I left Patricia to counter the enemy pennants, and set course to intercept the fleet before they attack the coast. She reported seeing around 90 ships. As soon as the squadron stopped engaging the light ships, the incoming Benetian fleet broke the formation. The lines of battleships and galleons shifted their courses to avoid sailing at close range. Six minutes later a battleship jumped up, together with a huge amount of water. It was followed by two more flying warships. The squadron scored 18 hits. The overall might of the incoming fleet was devastated by my sudden torpedo strike. Now the question was how to sink the rest of them. The pirates were having hard time handling even the small group of ships they faced. The small group which was just three times smaller than the main fleet. If those guys want to kill us, how far can they shoot? I asked the guru of naval warfare. If they want to kill you. They will not fire closer than one kilometer. If they really want to kill you, they will fire from two. Patricia's information was crucial to the engagement. After all, I need to know where from to engage. While we were entering the broadside course for the gunfight, I had some time to check the pirates' situation. The trophy battleships, coastal forts, and the floating battery were still fine. The western guns had better range and kept the Benetian battleships far enough, unless the main fleet enters the fight, the pirates should hold all pennants, avoid approaching the enemy closer than three miles, orders confirmed, all pennants, fire at will, orders confirmed, bang 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 after two minutes of firing, I scored only seven hits, the overall firepower of the squadron was enough to sink three battleships, Perhaps after seeing the range my guns had, the enemy set course straight towards the coast. The shooting range was soon adorned by two more battleships and two galleons sinking. Bang 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 from the speed and direction the enemy was sailing, I had to assume they will reach the attack course within eight minutes. When we sunk another battleship and three galleons, the enemy pushed the pirates' forces hard once again. The breech-loading cannons from the western ship came in handy. Bang 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 the important parts of the crew were working hard on correcting my fire. It took both experienced sailors to at least make sense of the rain of shells that were falling around the enemy vessels. The close of the enemy approached the coast. 
the better we were landing hits. Since we were still approaching the desired three miles of distance, the combination of manual aiming and AI stupidity resulted in sinking three battleships and four galleons. Meanwhile, we were already close enough to see the fight at the coast. The coastal batteries and the Black Demon were holding the enemy, and slowly removing the Benetian battleships. The Allies suffered only minor damage, and if we can take down the incoming fleet, we are golden. Bang 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 in the next two minutes we sunk two battleships and two galleons. There were around 50 pennants remaining, and even AP shots were not enough to take them all down. With the enemy fleet's approach, the situation at the coast turned bad. The remaining Benetian battleships pushed hard, and sunk an allied ship. As the situation started turning dire, the surface detection radar showed another group of ships on approach. This time they were providing a good radar signature and sailed fast. I tried to catch a glimpse, and barely saw a cloud of smoke coming from the open sea. Bang 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 we managed to sink three battleships and a galleon but only by the time the enemy fleet started receiving splashes from the pirates. The pirates faced the remaining power of the enemy main fleet. The squadron almost reloaded their torpedo tubes, and we prepared to strike. Together with the Western Fleet we will finally get rid of the Benetian Navy once and for all. V3CH79 Caught in crosshairs the squadron was sent into the final torpedo attack. Since there is only one reload of torpedoes, we have few chances of sinking the enemy ships. Most of the torpedoes missed the thinned lines of battleships. The attack scored 13 ships. How soon can your empire's ships reach us if they are around here? I showed the location on the map, and Emmanuel measured something. They can arrive within this hour, though, it is not fast enough to save those people. E, I had to accept a simple truth, I am a coward. The squadron was still sailing at a distance, and I was not going to come in and soak cannonballs in the pirates' stead. The defenders already sailed closer to ferry. They had to withdraw to get closer to the floating battery, and to ferries both as guns. I wondered if I should risk the Okazuki class ships to stall the Benetian onslaught. Ferry can output a ship per day, if needed. Still, are they that useless to risk losing them? While I wondered what to do, I saw that the battleships were not going to let anybody go. The enemy tried encircling the remaining pirate ships, and ferry third and fourth pennants sail straight at the enemies. Orders confirmed, after a brief telegraphing, Moizuki and Harutsuki separated from the squadron, and charged straight at the enemy. They are expendable, and in case I manage to use them properly, not only will I not lose anything but also sink the enemy with ease. Bang 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 while my ships were charging, we sunk three battleships. I could count it as a success if not for losing an allied battleship. When my destroyers entered the firing range of the enemy, they managed to draw most of the attention. The main fleet was forced to react, leaving few ships to handle the pirates. During the firefight, Harutsuki received a handful of shots, while covering the higher rank ship. Why are we staying away from the fight? Patricia only now started noticing that we are yet to jump into the action. Because we are made of armored foil with cardboard filling. She looked at me in confusion. Bang 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 while there was some breathing space for the pirates, we sunk three battleships and two galleons. The suicide rush of the destroyers drew away the attention, and the pirates managed to stabilize their situation as well as sink several enemy vessels. Mizuki received several hits from the enemy battleships. Seeing that the sheep are taking more and more damage, I started to consider withdrawing them, while they are still capable of fighting. The only reason I continue to risk them is that the western fleet is approaching. With every moment we win for the pirates, the help is approaching closer. The fog-like smoke I had spotted in the distance was now looking like a thick cloud of grey. In the next few minutes three more battleships, and two galleons disappeared underwater. The enemy fleet was but a shadow of its former self. Now that the enemy lost most of the heavy ships, the situation started to look favourable. 
The pirates regrouped with Izuki and Haratsuki. My destroyers took heavy beating, and will stay in dock for a long time. The enemy ships started disengaging, and turning away to gain some speed from the wind. Meanwhile, the first steam-powered ships started sailing from around the island. There were a little more than ten warships, all of which were light ships. The western vanguard immediately joined the pursuit. Unlike the slower sail ships, the steam-powered frigates were fast and did not rely on the winds. The frigates sailed from one side of the retreating fleet, and my main force followed the Benetian navy from the other side. When we overtook them, we cut off the retreat path. With the ironclads on approach, the enemy surrendered. Aside from minor stuff, the pirates got their hands on 18 heavy ships. It was more than enough to start preparing for an actual military campaign. We only needed to deal with the western fleet, that was aiming their guns at the port. V3CH80. A new side joins the war lines of ironclads stopped at the roadstead of the port. The iron plates on their sides have smudges of rust. And the wood at the waterline showed some rotting from long time in the sea. No matter how old these ships are. They were well maintained and had a lot of guns. They have less guns per side but the guns themselves have proven superior. I wouldn't even be worried about clashing this fleet with the scattered remnants of the enemy. I only have to worry about the battleship's guns being aimed at the structures on the coast. The only opposition we may have is a floating battery which has less than 20 guns in total, a few battered vessels of the pirates and my squadron which was all docked at Ferry's base for repairs and resupply. The ambiguous standoff continued for several hours, until one of the ironclads launched a boat. When the boat docked at the harbour, I saw that there were three people. Two were sailors, and the last one was wearing the same uniform as a manual. The dressed up man was indeed met by our liaison officer right at the pier. I could only look at them from the distance and catch parts of their conversation. It was completely in their language, so I had no idea what they are talking about. I continued stalking them, while the two men were strolling towards the HQ, and discussing something. They didn't even try hiding, or speaking quietly. It was a normal conversation, as if they are not in the middle of a potential war zone. After the men entered the HQ, I sneaked in closer and slipped through the door. Hello there. I was met by two legs in pants. When I looked up, I saw Emmanuel grinning at me. You did a good job being unnoticed but it is harder to fool me, who already has an idea of you sneaking around. The man patted me, and then his expression turned serious. Miss, I would like to have a private conversation. Which means, do not eavesdrop. I really do mean that it is better not to do it. I wanted to raise an objection but his expression was too serious to look like he will reconsider. Is it absolutely necessary? It is. This conversation is about my mission here, and all the reports I need to do. It does not concern you, or your comrades. Understood? I reluctantly nodded, and Emmanuel patted me again. I will be going then. See you a couple of hours later. The man disappeared in a conference room. Of course I had to eavesdrop but when I put my ear to the door, I heard nothing. They did something to block the sound. The curious cat grumbled, and had to go away. The doors of the luxurious bedroom opened, and a girl wobbled inside. All of the maid servants hurried to leave. Before the murmuring girl's attention turns to them, they did it right on time, as crystal items started shattering. Veronica collapsed on the bed, and twitched. With every passing moment, the girl's twitching was becoming more serious, until she convulsed and then stopped completely. A dark fog appeared, and formed into a figure. The figure passed by the unconscious girl, and approached the window. Why can't she be easier? The figure murmured, after Veronica received a report that the majority of the naval forces were wiped out, she went crazy. The mad girl's tantrum was ended only by her unexpected leave saving countless people. I am already doing all that you wanted. What is stopping you from focusing on what you need to do? Despite confirmed reports of the Western interference, 
Despite confirmations of increased number of unknown metal ships, and despite gambling all of the fleet in being, Veronica still ordered attacking the last known pirate hideout. She risked all of the chances of winning, and sent unfinished vessels. She sent the patrolling ships that protected maritime trade. She sent the last active battleships all instead of blockading the enemy. It was an act on the brink of a treason. She would be accused of the treason if not for the fact that she would kill everybody who dares to. Just why can't you do what you must? The figure caressed the sleeping girl's cheek, and dissolved. Four sisters no forty-four. I was going to delve into the books today. There is a free space right beside Iowa, and the entire academy is gossiping that whoever sits there and studies will have success with their exams. This might have something to do with the atmosphere my groaning and whining sister produces while she racks her brain on what to write next. As I was about to enter the library, I was called from behind, Miss Wisconsin. I turned around, and saw an unknown girl run towards me, ha ha ha. Miss Wisconsin, M. May I invite you to join our studying session? The girl was nervous. Why would I want to do so? Don't you have other people? T. The point is. We need one of the sisters, and you happen to be the only one available. I wondered why this blue haired girl suddenly decided that I am the best option here. There is Big Sis, go bother her. Miss Iowa is busy with His Highness. MMM Tilda, go for it. Iowa Tilda. If you would not agree, Miss Iowa would be distracted by other people. The girl fidgeted, and glanced at me with a plea. F fine, just don't expect me to be teaching you at the same level. The blue-haired girl led me to the entrance of the academy, and we boarded a carriage. Our destination was a large mansion somewhere in the capital. The girl led me straight to a room, and knocked. Knock knock who is there? A girl asked. My lady, I brought Miss Wisconsin to study. B.H. Enter. After we were given a no-so-necessary permission, we entered. There were the platinum blonde and a few more girls from the high-ranking families. Uh. I looked at a thin stack of books, and a thick stack of snacks. You may be overwhelmed by the honor you received but please, sit down. If a commoner like you can prove to be worthy of being in our presence, then I hope you will be useful as a PB. Cut the C. Are you even studying here, or stuffing your stomachs? How rude. Of course we are studying. PB, I nodded towards the books. Ah, that? That is the reason you are here. Why would we need to carry books? If we can use tutors, show what you are capable of and I may allow you to assist us with studying. I was indeed overwhelmed. That may be the first time when I wanted to shoot someone as much as I want to shoot the freak. A blue-haired girl leaned closer, and whispered, Please, otherwise we would have to bother His Highness, and Miss Iowa. B.H. Beg me to help you, or I am going. I puffed my chest and gave the platinum blonde a haughty look. Everybody was stunned by my sudden act, as if a commoner can order me around. The platinum blonde covered her reddened face with a fan. I'll be going then, see you. I was going to turn around and leave but the path was closed by a couple of maids. It would be rude of us to let a guest leave without drinking some tea. All of the girls grinned. Miss Wisconsin, please, help us. B. H. W. Where did you come from? She was not standing by my side previously, and she was not sitting with them too. Do not bother with asking her. If she does not want to help us, then so be it. Though it would be a rare chance to win our favor. P. B. On one side was teaching a bunch of snobs, on the other is bothering Iowa. Fine, I will step back a bit, ask me politely, and we'll start. Good, Tilda. The platinum blonde stood up and approached me. Please, do help us study. Especially help my friend over there. She pointed at the blue-haired girl. After wetting our throats with some high-end tea and snacks, 
we started the studying. Rather it was me helping a couple of girls solve the problems they had with the curriculum. The rest of them were busier with stuffing themselves with pastry after they were done with the tasks I gave them. Several times I missed the blue haired girl but everybody claimed she was always here. By the evening I managed to help a couple of young Viscountesses with their studying. I was about to leave, when the platinum blonde cornered me somewhere in the hallway. You may think you did a good job but remember that it is just your duty. P.B.R. Yeah, thank you. I said something to make her leave. Good, do not let praises get into your head. I want you to join several studying sessions more. We, the noblest of people, may not require your services but our juniors will require somebody to entertain them while we are busy with more important tasks. Remember that. She proudly hit her chest, and walked away. Whatever, at least the snacks are good. V3CH81 Unfair negotiations between uneven partners Emmanuel spent two hours in the conference room. And the next second right after the door opened, I was standing there. Tell me everything. I asked the first one who stepped out. A man in uniform glared at me, and turned to Emmanuel. Wait for a bit, will you? Emmanuel sighed, and gently pushed me out of the man's way. We all headed to Alba's room. While we were walking there, I noticed that Emmanuel was not in the best mood. I made a mental note to ask him, when we arrive. The pirate's high command received us immediately. The atmosphere in the room was depressed. It might have something to do with the recent fight, or something to do with the Western Fleet's shenanigans. All five people sat down at a table, and prepared to discuss something. Even though I am one of them, I still have no idea what is going to happen. Emmanuel and the fleet officer were preparing a stack of documents, while Alba was attentively observing them. I have a feeling you will not understand anything there, no matter how hard you try reading it. Emmanuel glanced behind, to remind me that there is nothing for me to look at. Even if you tell me this, why would you need those papers, if they are of no use to us? Bureaucracy at its finest. Emmanuel sighed, and continued sorting the papers. Since there was nothing interesting to catch, I sat down and waited. The men were done a few minutes later. Right on time as Patricia returned with a couple of teapots and cups. When the tea was served we started the discussion. Emmanuel passed the thick stack of documents to Alba, and started telling us about the task of the fleet, and the plans of the Empire for the following month. From his exciting speech I understood one thing. You guys are not going to return? Basically, yes. Emmanuel did not try denying. I wish to know one thing. What is the price of your aid? Since the speech was already interrupted, Alba used the opportunity to start the negotiations. The Empire wants to establish a permanent trade route, and secure a fair trade deal with the islander nations of this region. E, what a nice deal. I had no idea if Alba was sarcastic here. Translation. We want to station battleships here, and buy your resources for nothing, while selling our junk for gold and silver. After hearing my blurting, both men opened their mouths. Emmanuel tried bleating something but since they couldn't refute, they remained with their mouths agape. As you can guess, the terms are not the most beneficial for us. A, should I remind you that there are 40 battleships right outside? Emmanuel nonchalantly pointed towards the port. Then go and fight yourselves. No aid from us, and all the troubles are on you. Alba nonchalantly said it, and turned her attention to the tea. Emmanuel and the officer exchanged whispers, and finally presented their response. We can agree on helping the rebels, on the condition that the Empire will have full rights of basing their warships in the ports the rebels will be controlling after the defeat of the current government. E. Translate. A. Translation. We can dock anywhere we want, and the more ports you control. The more ships we can station. If you defeat Benizio completely, and control all of the lands, we would have access anywhere. Emmanuel nodded, confirming that my translation is correct. Not for free. Alba immediately rebutted the offer. All of the hardships of the fighting will be on our navy. 
Of course we must have a proper compensation for that. E, K H M K H M. Hello, I am not dead yet. We all know who will be doing most of the dangerous job, do we? After another western consultation, Albert beckoned me to lend my ear. No ships here, only over my dead body. A, Emmanuel and I smiled at each other, while the officer and Albert were in the middle of incinerating each other with their glares. If no ships, then what Tilda? I guess we both know that we will either agree on something, or start killing each other over nothing. How about we both agree on having the Empire's warships escort the trade caravans for a share of trade profits? You get your presents, while we don't get threatened? Clap 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 immediately, I started hearing applause from behind. Right where Patricia and Alba are, the officer's expression was very wry, and Emmanuel was trying to give me a business smile. V3CH82 The alliance of steam and steel the Empire's officer was becoming crimson. Emmanuel was whispering him something, until he calmed down. A few minutes later they were done discussing. We are ready to hear your offer Tilda. I put my palm on my cheek, and perked up my ears. We have a good idea. How about we postpone the question until we finish the war? It is better not to count our chickens before they hatch. Now it was my turn to give a business smile, and Albers to smile wryly. Do you consider us idiots? The woman was slowly starting to boil, unless we have an understanding of our side's contribution. E, I ask again. Do you think we are idiots? I waved my arm in front of Alba and took the baton. Come on, guys. You will then demand a huge sum which you found out of nowhere and ask for some ridiculous compensation after we are bled dry. I already voiced a great offer, which will suit everybody. What is a tough effort? E. Yeah, especially when you know who is going to be doing all of this effort. Emmanuel was trying to retort but it was clear that now the West is just going to sweep the empty islands. I may consider a concession, if you have troops on board. Because otherwise you would be using our soldiers, wouldn't you? Emmanuel thought hard, until he raised his arms, as if he were surrendering, and sat down. Great. I was about to declare our uncontested victory. When Emmanuel finally said something, we will agree to your terms, if you add one more condition. We want to have full information on the production of crystal. The Benetian glass. I immediately glanced at Alba and Patricia. Both of them were hesitating to give an answer. I leaned to Alba, to ask, is it valuable? It is the largest share of local goods sold to the West. And the most valuable. A. Eh? I gave her a smile and turned back to the other side of our negotiations. Emmanuel and I exchanged smiles. Of course no. The man's smile quickly turned into grimace. The western side continued offering us very beneficial terms, all of which were refused immediately. With every rejected offer, the atmosphere was becoming tenser. I started to expect the officer to just bang the table, stand up and walk away. Even our somewhat friendly Emmanuel looked like he would do the same, if the talks continue like this. Guys, just accept it. While we were talking, Ferry already resupplied my squadron. If you will try doing silly stuff, you will face a huge problem. I bluffed. Ferry is yet to finish repairing the ships, and the strain I put on the ship's steam engines was enough to require routine maintenance. Of course. It is only me and Fairy who know that. The others have no idea. Emmanuel and the officer finished another round of consultations, and the man announced, You won. However, unless the trade starts within six months, we will be talking about a huge compensation. E. Works for me. With the terms of our cooperation worked out, the war efforts rekindled, the western ironclads loaded troops and set sail to the nearby colonies. While I was waiting for the squadron to finish repairing, I trained with Patricia. The results were humble but my skills were improving. Simultaneously with swinging the katana, 
I was discussing the future logistics with Ferry. Since we are going to sail out soon, I thought about setting up Ferry somewhere closer to the front lines. Another thing I wanted to do was checking the stats. Ding you received 282 upgrade points, firing, 950 upgrade points, hits, 210 upgrade points, torpedo hits, 0.7 modifier, IJN Kirin Army, DDL, upgrade points, 0, torpedoes, 130, HP, 3700, high minus 100%, AU minus 0%, 0, 0 nanometers, under maintenance, 734 and 20 seconds, 5 dual turrets full upgrade, 24 quintuple torpedo mount, oxygen torpedo storage 2, 668 two thousandths. I find it funny that I can be multitasking, while Patricia is trying to cut me with her sword. Maybe I can even try talking to Yuriko about training. While the ship is repaired, she has nowhere to sit, and nothing to do. Ping, I just need to hold on until Patricia gets tired of me. Four sisters no 45. Competitors, prepare. The judge raised the flag, and quickly backed away from the circle in the center of the arena. In the name of his majesty, let the special semi-finals start. I counted milliseconds until the flag passes the point, and the fight will start. My opponent grinned with a maniacal smile, as she was about to face me in the fight. All guns were up, and all of them were aimed at her. Only the flag was separating us from the carnage. The time has stopped. I could see individual grains of sand falling in the sound clock. I could see a fly flapping its wings. I could see how my opponent's eyes shone with bloodlust and her muscles flexed in anticipation. The flag passed the point, signaling the start of the fight. A spark, and the cordite ignited, sending the shells out of the gun barrels. Boom 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 bang 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 and then I got hit in the face. That's what happens when you think you can win against me. Shut up. You're just lucky. Whatever you say, Mo. Engie patted my head, and went to pick up her prize. Once again. My big sister won the duel. Don't worry about it Tilda. Look at me, Mo Tilda. That's my girl Tilda. Big sis put a patch on my nose, to cover the bruise I got from the hit. It is one of the many unsolvable mysteries of the world. How New Jersey can be both a dork, and the strongest of us. Instead of overthinking this, I returned to the seats. Whiskey was still sitting there, and consuming another ice cream. Did she pass by? Nah, I am yet to see the freak. How's your nose? She gave me an ice cream. I'm fine, thank you. Still, I was close. Yeah, closer than me. We you can always go to the arena if you want to show off. Sorry, I don't plan to be showing off like certain sisters of mine. I pinched her cheek. Who you're talking about Tilda? Why yet go? I continued pinching her, until I will arrived with New Jersey in tow. We continued enjoying the fights on the arena. Our little brawl was just a filler until the next fighters were ready. They both were hurt and required healing magic and blacksmith services, so nobody questioned us fighting. Now, it is the time for the show to continue. The next fighters prepared for the fight, and started hitting each other. The four of us were eating popcorn, and enjoying the show. It's better than boxing. Yeah, that's funny to hear from our crybaby. NJ. I didn't say it's the best. Yeah, agreed. There is nothing better than National League. All four of us hummed in concordance. One of the fighters, a bulky man with a bat leaks, kicked away his opponent, and through some powerful magic he strengthened his strike. He swung the axe down at the lying opponent. Boom the hit created a huge hole in the ground of the arena, and the second fighter was lying there, unconscious. The first fighter was showered in ovations. Then, he shouted, I am the uncontested champion. Is there anybody WHO dares fighting me? We exchanged glances, and smirked, while the spectators were applauding with all of their might. We were laughing out loud. After the applause subsided, the announcer shouted, Congratulations to the new champion. As the winner of the contest, 
he receives the newest magical device, a magic box that can produce ice with fruit flavor. Congratulations. I glanced at the others through a rapid rock paper MK7 game we solved the approaching problem. Go tear him apart, Mo. NJ, don't get hurt. Yeah, TCH, big sis, I'd rather worry about the other guy. We While the super cool device was rolled out to the arena, I hopped between the seats. I reign supreme. The champion gloated. Then, I jumped down to the arena. Hello there Tilda. Uh. The announcer was confused, and I hurried to declare the goal of my visit. Hereby I come. I, the great fire demon shall have a bout with you. For the sake of. I yield. Let her have the prize. Before I even could finish my declaration, the fruit ties machine was given to me. And I ended up as the winner of the fighting contest. At least we now have a constant supply of lemonade ice. V3CH83. Opening the sea gates after the defeat of the Benetian navy, the downfall of the doge was evident. The first scouting raids of the western fleet showed that the enemy withdrew all of their ships, even the ones that were protecting the commerce. Since there was no need to worry about the opposition from the sea, the pirates embarked on the western ships, and pushed forward, forward towards the undefended colonies of Benizio. It took us an entire month to make our way towards the city of Benizio. The enemy lair was right behind a small fort that guarded a strategic passage between the shallows where the ironclads couldn't pass. With the fort taken, the capital will be in our grasp. For this operation we concentrated the entirety of the available forces, everything that was free, from the seasoned soldiers that were fighting since the start of Alba's movement to the colonial militias from oppressed colonies liberated by the pirates. Many of our forces were unavailable due to the distance, and due to the need to maintain control over the captured islands. The vanguard fleet dropped their anchors 13 miles away from the fort. My entire squadron is accompanied by 10 ironclads, and a handful of light vessels. All of the western ships had squads of infantry on board. I was sending light signals across the fleet. However, my usual human, light interpreter was replaced with a manual, since the western light signaling was different from the Benetian. After I conveyed that I will head in first and suppress the batteries, I started accelerating. Our small gang of reckless fighters was ready to charge right at the enemy with our swords and guns ablaze. All ships, fire at the batteries. Orders confirmed. Bang bang way before the enemy coastal batteries could return fire, my squadron started devastating them. No matter how skilled the enemy gunners are, they can't overcome one slight issue. We have better range. With just slowing down a bit, we could keep on sailing towards the fort, and shoot scot free. Bang bang when another salvo of shells landed, I confirmed straddling the last battery I saw. As we sailed closer and closer to the coast, the enemy's situation became problematic. I ordered the squadron to stay a bit away from the coast, and continued towards a pier. Right when we all disembarked, the enemy opened fire with their rifles. Whoosh, whoosh, take cover. Seriously? We better close the distance while we can. P. Aha. Uh -huh. Somebody was boasting how she learned to deflect bullets. Perhaps you have an idea who she is, doll. Yuriko started pushing me out of cover. W wait. Show me that you can, and I will teach you all skills that I know of. Now, go. Before I could grip something, I was sent out from the cover with a kick. That's the spirit. Yuriko Tilda. Patricia chuckled, and ran to me. F whoosh f whoosh ping I started swinging the katana and trying to make sure nothing will hit me. Patricia can handle herself without me getting in her way. The two of us started walking forward. The firing from the enemy start was becoming stronger as the reinforcements arrived. Boom 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 when the amount of enemies reached a certain point, they automatically attracted the attention of the destroyers. While everybody was shell-shocked, Patricia and I pushed forward, leaving Emmanuel and Eureka far behind. By that point the fight turned into routine clearing of the coastline. Most of the enemies retreated to the fort itself, 
and the fleet was given the green light to make their landfall. Emmanuel remained behind to take command, while Eureka was finally with us to push forward. The three swords swarm and rapidly climbed the fort's walls, and cleared the gatehouse. While we are having fun, by Patricia, the soldiers will make their way to the fort, enter, and start fighting. If they would have anybody to fight, an entire month of fighting was a good exercise for my skills, so I was not dragging behind the crazy sword masters. In an hour the fort was taken, the guns were destroyed completely, and the enemy forces surrendered. From the topmost point of the island we could see the approaching forces of the armada. In a couple of days the ships will regroup on the other side of the shallows, and we will continue towards the main goal. It was the time to clear the last opposing forces of Benizio. V3 CH84 The invasion of Benizio I was listening to the sound of waves and the propellers. A slow humming of the destroyer's propellers was impeded by a loud noise of the western ship's early propellers. A V formation of the destroyers was sailing in front of the ironclads and frigates. As the fleet was approaching the city of Benizio the underwater activity greatly increased. The enemy could at most approach the armada but they had no chances of intercepting us. The prototype submarines were way too slow to even have a chance of catching up to an idling ironclad, which is why the enemy started setting up the subs on the way of the fleet. It is a tough task, hearing a submarine which is just suspended in the middle layers of the sea. I have to listen into every sound to just have a minor chance of hearing anything through the rattling of the ironclads. My squadron already proved themselves incapable of doing this, while I caught two subs, all of which were sunk after they slipped below the destroyers. From time to time my eyes were turning to the radar screen which was showing a large group of ships to the southeast of us. The enemy fleet was following us but they did not dare entering the visible range, and I did not consider them a threat to inform the others. We were slowly sailing towards the capital. www A single noise was enough for me to start bombing the sea in front of us. Pom 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 when my ASW mortars discharged, the squadron followed my lead, and fired their own ASW weapons. Boom 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 I continued listening the hydrophone, and looking at the radar. Slam no debris. Patricia rushed into the hydroacoustics room. Got it. Let's party hard, sneaky bastards. Pom 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 I. And the squadron, started bombing the sea ahead of us until water started dancing like the fountains of Bellagio. When we were closer to the point where I assumed the sub is, I ordered to drop the depth charges on their heads. Splash boom 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 at the same time, Patricia flew into the room once again. Debris to our starboard. P. Great. I guess we wasted some ammunition tilde. Not that it matters, right? She smiled wryly. Why would it tilde? I decided not to mention that after we start the invasion, we will have to sail back to resupply. The invasion fleet reached the visual range of the capital without any additional adventures. We lost no ships, and sunk several submarines. All without any interference from the enemy fleet. We were sure that the enemy will not attack unless we enter the range of the coastal batteries. After all, even the most stupid commander would notice that this tactic works, after being beaten with it for countless times. The ironclads started forming a long battle line, and the frigates hid behind them. I set up my squadron on the same side as the frigates. When the fight starts, the destroyers will be dealing with the enemy fleet, while the ironclads will focus fire on the coast. When all of the ships were ten miles away from the coast, the Benetian fleet stopped sailing in parallel, and started approaching. When the fleet was just five miles away, the firefight started with 127mm guns opening fire. Bang 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 I will go to the bridge. Can I leave everything to you? I let Yuriko sit down in the operator's seat. Absolutely. My ears will miss nothing. The woman gave me a tender smile, and started listening for submarines. I rushed to the bridge, 
where Patricia was already waiting. Report. 30 capital ships, and as many light ships. I can't see anything in the port, because of the battleships. P. Thank you. Let's sink them. Bang 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 by the time the ironclads opened fire at the coastal fortifications, we sunk four galleons. High explosive shells of the ironclads were quickly turning the defenses into nothing, as the vanguard made their way towards the port where we will be disembarking. In the enemy's place I would doubt the chances of winning. There is a long line of ironclads and frigates, and the remnants of the fleet couldn't contest even my squadron. Neither could they contest the thick cloud of black smoke that was approaching the city from the west. V3CH85. Fighting on the enemy's turf the vanguard was slowly sailing towards the port. Every gun on the way to the port was shelled with the combined might of twenty ironclads. The enemy is given no chance to hinder the approach of the main invasion force. Right now the only thing that could interfere with the vanguard's landing is the remaining naval force of Benizio, the one my squadron is dealing with. Bang 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 after another hit, a battleship turned into a torch. The cinders of the exploding ship were visible even from here. We have a good chance to get rid of them. Why don't you send the ships to destroy them completely? Emmanuel showed a couple of maneuvers on the map. All of them involved separating from the vanguard fleet. It might work. Squadron, regroup on me. Line ahead. Orders confirmed. A minute later the enemy finally started understanding what is happening. By that time the firepower concentrated on their ships. Bang 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 we focused fire on the galleons. To leave the enemy without their heavy cruisers. With every ship sunk or immobilized. Our chances of winning were increasing. They already broke through the 100% ceiling, and almost reached 200%. I am that sure, that we will win. Bang 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 my shells were guided by the God's hand. Otherwise I couldn't explain how I managed to hit four ships, leading to them blowing up. The squadron successfully blocked all of the enemy's ways to approach the vanguard fleet. The Allies would need around an hour to unload troops. They almost made way into the port, and now were busy clearing the landing site. Bang 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 focus fire on the light ships. Orders confirmed. Splash splash dot, what the hell. Splash I launched all of the torpedoes, and almost without issues they were sent at the enemy ships. I reached a whooping amount of ten hits. All of the battleships were sent into the abyss in the same minute. It was now time to let the squadron clear what is left. I headed to the port. By the time I arrived almost nothing changed. The ironclads were shooting at anything that moved but whenever the ships tried approaching the piers, they were fired at from guns and cannons hidden around. Looks like we've got work to do. I felt someone's hand petting me. That's the spirit Tilda. Patricia's hand quickly made me purr and was stopped only by a sudden entrance of Eureka. Is there any plan? Why? There is. You were saying something about draining. Indeed, I happen to let go of the doll. I might as well fulfill my promises once in a while. Eureka removed the warm hand off my scalp, and dragged me by the hand to the deck. I carried her over to the land, and we immediately drew swords. Like a Jedi, I started deflecting bullets and swinging the katana, the two of us started rapidly clearing the port, the vanguard fleet could finally start disembarking the troops, the first squads of infantry secured the port, and while the main fleet was approaching, we could train, at most Turiko could teach me some simple skills, since I am a bit slow to learn the complex magic patterns of advanced skills. It is surely not because I have no idea what I'm doing. Instead of pushing forward, it was decided that deploying all of the troops we have, and then pushing forward with concentrated mass of troops, will be a good idea. My lesson lasted until the night. For the night the troops set a lot, and fell asleep. Tomorrow is going to be the last fight for most of them. I too decided to let off some steam, and threw a party for all of my friends excluding Fairy, who is too vulnerable to approach, especially when she resupplies the entire squadron. Why lie, Patricia, Eureka, 
and Emmanuel were drinking and having fun. A gloomy figure in a cloak entered the tent. For a moment all of us got tense but we immediately relaxed when the figure took off the cloak. I see you are enjoying the rest? Alba sat down beside Patricia, and picked up a cup. It's nice to see you but why would you come all the way here, to the front line? What? You think I am too old for this Tilda? Back in my days, Patricia looked at me with a plea. Either she wants to make me hear Alban out, or shut her up. Still, can you tell me why you are here? Ah, this? I just thought that if we are about to burn this place down, I might as well remember how it looked like, as well as I might settle a thing or two. A. Eh? I pretended to hear nothing, and returned to drinking. Alba used this opportunity wisely, making us all listen to her stories for the entire night. V3CH86 Fall of Benizio The morning started with refreshing sound of cannons. Bang 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 the ironclads, and the returned squadron, fired at everything that dared defending. Mostly they were firing just somewhere, without caring for the collateral damage. We didn't care all that much about it. After all, we are the warriors of light and biscuits, and they are hordes of darkness and tyranny. Well, only we considered the Benetian government to be a tyranny. Bang 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 the pirates were slowly pushing forward. They were met with heavy resistance at every street, behind every corner, inside of every building. The lead and smoke was coming from every direction. We expected that much. We are in the heart of the enemy. It wouldn't be surprising that they have a strong military presence here. Bang 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 keep your heads down. Emmanuel shot a purple coat on one of the barricades. Wherever we were before, the local militias would scatter after losing the commander. Bang 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 but not here. Just who? In the Emperor's name, are they? Emmanuel had to take cover faster than the soldiers. After everybody on the barricades focused fire on him. Bang bang get ready. I drew the katana, and prepared to give the troops some breathing space. F whoosh ping 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 air slash. After I swung the katana, a wave of magic flew towards the barricade, inflicting severe casualties. I managed to wound a woman with a rifle. To hide my embarrassment, I pushed forward while deflecting all shots. Bang 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 it fair. Instead of firing from time to time, the militia fired a huge salvo, hitting me everywhere. No matter how frustrated I was, I couldn't make up my mind to fire the guns at the militiamen. They were not even wearing anything uniform. Those were just civilians. Bang 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 there were women, elders, there were even children. Unlike the regular purple coats, the militia were firing as accurately, as I would, if I was to fire at maximum range with a blindfold, disabled FCS radar, while being shaken by Patricia, and sailing during a storm. I was not the only one who shared this sentiment. The pirates too didn't hurry to fire to kill. Some stray bullets were taking down the militia, however. Few soldiers were trying to aim better than somewhere in that direction. It was a weird fight. The militia barely hit a side of a barn from ten steps, while the pirates struggled to shoot only the males, or those who were unlucky enough to be hit by a stray bullet. With my help, we pushed up to thirty meters away from the barricade. Then we heard a shout, Charge! You apes! Do you want to live forever? I was curious, sturdy enough to peek. Get ready. The militia started climbing over the barricade. They fixed bayonets, and rushed at us. Fix your bayonets. Form up. Emmanuel stopped us from thinking, and instead of waiting for something, he drew a saber. Two masses of people rushed at each other. One of them consisted of a mishmash of civilians, and the other was seasoned infantry. Air slash. Air slash. Air slash. I was casting the spells like crazy. The unexpected charge resulted in a bloody fight. Both sides were taking heavy loses, before the pirates came to their senses. They already took a lot of casualties. Then, it was the militia's turn. When we faced the choice of kill or be killed, it was evident that no one tried to feign their fighting. Most of the militia from this barricade were killed. 
Now it was the time to push towards the next barricade, to repeat the same crazy fight. No matter how slow and crazy it all was, the pirates were slowly pushing forward. The noble district was already encircled, and we were on our way to the doge's mansion. We no longer heard the cannonade from the sea. All targets were destroyed, or they no longer deemed it necessary to waste ammunition. Several fire teams met at the entrance of the doge's palace. Patricia and Eureka were chilling. Emmanuel joined them in this endeavor. Why are we waiting? I asked Patricia. Oh, welcome back, we are waiting for mother. She ordered to wait for her, before getting to the main dish. P, he's gonna run away, you know? Both of us know this palace inside and out, trust me, as long as the crazy bee is still alive, he will not run away. P, good to know. Only when a group of toy soldiers appeared in the distance, we stood up and prepared for assault. The elite guard of Alba will head in together with my crew. Let us pay a visit to my hubby, shall we Tilda? A, four sisters no forty-six. A long time ago in an academy far, far away, a certain ship girl was struggling with a ridiculous task of finishing her research assignment, which does not appear to be comparable to a full-scale research in any way. I already became one of the myths of the academy, because of how rare I can be seen outside of the library. I already pushed all of my lessons onto my sister's shoulders, and I only have to write, and write, and write. My pen already grew to my hand and my bottom is anchored to the seat. All for the sake of finishing the writing, and not having to try the qualifications exam again, it was a nightmare much worse than this. With every finished page I was close to mental breakdown. Yo, how is it going? I turned around to see Mo. What's up? I almost finished writing the first 200 pages. Good job, big sis. Just remember that you will have to write the rest before the end of the month. Mo, uh, you forgot, they changed the deadline. The principal himself told you this, and we all reminded you about it for a few times. I felt cold and sweaty. Actually, I almost fainted. Ha, 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 ha 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 ha. Come on, you can break down later. Right now. Let's go and catch something to eat. New Jersey found a way to save you. Since I was like a doll with cut strings, Mo had to carry me all the way to the cafeteria. When I recovered from the heart attack, I saw that I was surrounded by people. There were a lot of people in suspicious cloaks and hoods, and among them I saw the platinum blonde. Is she going to be like this? PB, relax. Big Sis will be bouncing around right after she sees food and booze. Mo, I. I'm fine. See? Missouri sat me down at a table, and after a flick of fingers, the waiters brought a lot of food, and several cups of ale. My starved organism severed the connection between my conscience and the body, and I started stuffing myself with everything I saw. The suspicious people did not disappear but sat down at a nearby table. While I was eating, Mo was discussing something with the platinum blonde. Do make sure you will fulfill your promise. PB. Yeah, right, whatever. Just make sure those guys will do their job. Mo. Oh. They absolutely will. Unlike you, commoners, those people can do anything. PB. Oh my. Then how the hell the commoners are doing everything in your stead? Mo, guys, I know you like to bicker but let me eat. Jerked meat and protein bars are incomparable to this table. The girls continued bickering back and forth with their gestures and looks, until I was done eating. Hartilda, now, what's up with those guys? I pointed at the suspicious bunch. The cavalry has arrived, big sis. Mo giggled and beckoned the people to come closer. They are from the Scholars Foundation. Since there was a time or two when I borrowed your raid, I decided to bestow my aid. Feel free to use their assistance to finish writing your research. PB, uh, guys, you know that it is an individual assignment, right? Indeed, it is. PB, then. However, the Academy's rules never specify the usage of outside aid in writing the research, 
You cannot have somebody do your own research but you can have others write down what you researched. As long as you just let them write the pages in your stead, nobody will have issues with it. I grinned at Mo, and she grinned back. Now I have a slim chance of finishing everything. After all, I already have every bit of material I will be writing. Also, I decided to read the entire legal basis to find more loopholes I can use. V3CH87 Bitter memories the elite strike team was walking through a large hallway of the Doge's palace. The bustling hallways were empty, and the guards were nowhere to be seen. Nobody appeared in the hallways. Nobody tried to stop us. Nobody fought us. We let our guard down. Even the elite bodyguards of Alba had their rifles shouldered. Why is nobody expecting a fight? I finally broke the silence. That monster is the only problem we may encounter. Alba looked around, and whistled. Nobody answered. Even she is not here? A. Eh? We approached the large oak door. The soldiers piled up at the walls, and prepared to breach. My crew drew their swords, and Emmanuel cocked the revolver. A soldier glanced at Alba, and they exchanged nods. The woman carelessly approached the door, and opened it. Go, go, go. The soldiers pushed in with their guns at ready. Only then we noticed that the room is empty. The only thing that stood out was a large golden box near the desk. What the hell? That man would never. Alba fumed and walked to the desk. When she was near the box, she looked at it for a moment, before staggering. What? What happened? Patricia rushed to her side. When the girl looked at the box, she fell on her knees. Now it was my turn to approach. Holy. It was not something I expected. Inside of the box was an embalmed body. It was the doge. I perfectly remember how he looked during our past meeting, and I swear, his body looks like he is just asleep, though I doubt that he would be sleeping here, like a vampire, father. Patricia wept. I gestured to Yuriko and Emmanuel, and they dragged the aghast mother and daughter. After a quick look I saw that the box can be easily opened. I sat in front of Alba and Patricia to ask them, can we open that thing? Yes, please do. Sweetie, is it all right? Alba hugged the shivering girl. After Patricia nodded, I opened the box and put the body on the floor. I am not a doctor but I am sure he didn't die today. Unlike the others, my nose picked up a chemical smell, a signal that the body was meticulously preserved. When I unbuttoned the clothes of the corpse, I saw a small hole in its chest. I signaled Yuriko to approach. Is that what I think it is? No doubt. It is the same weapon. Why, tell us. Alba already recovered but still didn't dare to approach. He was killed with a rapier. Who would have thought? A. Mother? P. Well he called it upon himself, by himself. I had said let's drown that B. Where is your useful girl now? Was it even worth it? Alba approached a cupboard, and without a moment of hesitation pulled out a tablecloth. She covered the body and sat at the desk. I will look through the documents here. Can I ask you, soldiers, to remove the body? You, take Patricia somewhere else. This place is the last I would want to see her be. Alba started pulling papers out of cabinets and sorting them. Patricia and I started wandering around the palace. The girl calmed down a bit, and stopped shivering. Would she really do this? Who? P. Would Veronica kill him? I don't know. P. Patricia suddenly stopped, and approached an inconspicuous door. Creak the door easily opened, and we entered a dark room. I used search lights to light up the room. It was a bedroom. All furniture was covered with cloth. Everywhere around the room were scattered toys. Dried withered flowers were standing in vases. Paintings on the walls were completely covered in dust. Patricia wandered around the room for a while. Before leaving, I stayed for a moment. I swept away dust from the paintings. Curiosity kills the cat girl, and stuff. Aside from some generic pictures of nature, and some portraits of family members, I found nothing. When I was leaving, I saw a small frame lying in a corner. I picked it up and cleared away the dust. 
There was a small painting of two little girls. They were suspiciously similar to Patricia and Veronica, with one slight difference. They were happily hugging each other and smiling. I took the painting with me, and hurried after Patricia. The girl was waiting for me outside the room. Let's go. This place gives me goosebumps. The girl tugged me away. After we made a circle around the palace, we returned to the office. When we entered, Alba beckoned us to come closer. What is it? Just read it. She gave me a small piece of paper. There was written, See you in the port. V3CH88. Challenge in the port. The port was awfully silent. Clouds of steam were rising from the water around submerged ships. Emmanuel was looking at the western ironclads and frigates, and was trying to say something but no words could leave his mouth. A bit more than a dozen of steam warships were sunk and no traces of their crews could be seen from the land. At the edge of a waterfront was standing a girl in a plated dress. Her golden hair was fluttered by sea breeze. It doesn't look like you are going to surrender. The girl chuckled, and turned around. Veronica's expression was calm. She can win easily but this time, we will not hesitate. 4 versus 1. Even she won't be able to stop us. Veronica started walking towards us without drawing a rapier. Emmanuel was about to walk towards her but we all gripped him. You bet it is she who sunk the ships. Nonsense. E. How about we talk this through? I tried to catch the girl's attention. Let us try it Hilda? Veronica smiled. Why did you destroy everything here? Why would you even want to fight us now? It's over. The smile disappeared from her face. She will go on a rampage, should anything happen. Veronica looked at me with disdain, before gripping the rapier's scabbard. What do you mean? This is a nice place where I can fight you freely, without unnecessary interference. V, come on, why do we even need to fight? If you surrender. Veronica only laughed, and pointed behind us, as a dummy cat, I had to turn around and look. No bad guy would let an opportunity to talk about his evil plan slip by. A small squad of soldiers was approaching us. They were led by Alba. There is only one person missing. V, sorry, daddy couldn't come. A, as he always did. V, with every second of mother-daughter chat, Alba's expression was becoming darker, until the woman gripped a dagger. Who the hell are you? Alba shouted and prepared to order the troops to open fire. Quick draw. E. Bang ping in a split second the fight broke out. Yuriko stepped back a bit, bracing herself for some reason. Be cautious. I can't feel anything from her. Why, rude. Veronica crossed the distance between us in one leap. Bang 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 don't interfere. V. Arg. Veronica kicked Alba so hard that the woman flew several meters. You dare? Patricia tried hitting Veronica in the back but the sword hit only her after image. Veronica was already poking holes in Eureka. I hurried to assist, and managed to block one of the rapier strikes. Grandmaster's prowess. V. Before I could guess what happened I was hit several times, and could only catch a glimpse of Veronica flying off at someone else. G.H.A. Patricia was the next one to cross swords with Veronica. Bang 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 in between attacking Patricia, Veronica deflected all of the soldiers and Emmanuel's shots. I couldn't fire because I risked hitting Patricia. I had to rush to assist once again. Before I could even approach Patricia, Veronica was already by Alba's side. Ugh. The girl mercilessly pierced both of the woman's legs. Before disappearing again. Bang bang a spitcher. The man tried shooting the rapidly approaching girl but to no avail. Instead of fighting us, Veronica was just running around. She was inflicting light wounds, without actually trying to fight. I had no idea if she didn't even consider us a threat, or she was just having sadistic fun of draining us of blood and strength. I was the next to be attacked. Ping 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 I somehow managed to block the girl's attacks which somehow made her delighted. Instead of running at someone else, Veronica continued fighting me. For an unknown reason I was managing the attacks well, and parried almost everything she threw at me. 
Bytilda. My katana slashed air, and I heard screams. When I turned around, Alba's soldiers were already dead, and Veronica was pulling out the rapier out of Emmanuel's stomach. Patricia was patching wounds on Alba's legs, and Eureka tried to stop the crazy dance of Veronica. For a moment I felt my sanity going somewhere else. After all, we were just playthings for the girl. Just stop already. Whirlwind. Eureka swung the Jarugi, and a wave similar to my air slash hit Veronica. The girl staggered and stopped. She started trembling, and laughed. Ha 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 ha. Four sisters no 47. It was a nice and calm day. The sun was shining all over the academy. The students were walking around, playing, and chatting together. The skirts were fluttering, and short skirts re-entered the fashion trends. Every self-respecting girl wears one. I was sitting in my room. The window was covered with curtains, and when the sun started shining through, I hanged a blanket on the curtain rod. From this morning I moved ten feet in total, covering the vast distance between the bed and the computer. All I wanted is to be left alone, without having to see any living thing. I only wanted to see my electronic friend, and my wife us. Did you hear me? Repeat everything I said. Yeah, he. 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 Of course, you didn't listen. Why am I not even surprised? Instead of sitting here all day and wasting your life. Yeah, I wondered who let Iowa out of her confinement, and promised myself to find the perpetrator and punish them. Nagging, nagging, nagging. So, stop sitting here, and go do something. I immediately stood up and headed to the door, before I starts making me study. When I exited the dormitory, I was about to go take some pictures, however, I saw something a bit more interesting. A small group of girls were standing far away from the usual routes, and they were surrounding a crying girl. That was your typical bullying situation, and if a knight in shining armor appears out of nowhere and saves the maiden in distress, then she might give herself to me. I tactically approached the bullies, by crawling through my usual holes in bushes, and was about to jump out and save the victim. Absolutely. Sometimes those men are the most disgusting of people. They pretend to be nice and kind to you. And when you marry, they forget about your existence. Do not worry. I am sure His Highness is just busy. If he cheats on you, I swear. I will personally kick him there. Everything is good, as long as you don't walk into her. Being neglected by his highness is nothing in comparison to that shame. Audrey, say something better than that. Crackle together with the sound of a breaking branch, some could hear the sound of my heart shattering. One of the few opportunities I have to approach a girl and be seen as a hero was wasted. Since there was no point in hiding. I stepped out. Girls immediately covered the victim. Relax, girls. I just saw you surround a crying girl. That's it. Is there anything going on? Big Sis Angie can help too Tilda. The girls exchanged glances, and silently decided something. We are watching you. They stepped to the sides and I saw the crown prince's fiance. Hiya, how's it going? W-Y should I tell you? C-P-F. It's just a greeting. So, what's going on with the prince? The girl looked away and sobbed. Another girl leaned closer and whispered. His highness did not visit her for the past week. Ah, I see. What's up? Does anybody see the prince? The first thing one does when there is no idea what to do. They ask their sisters. I don't know. I'm eating. At least he's not in the restaurant. We I have no idea. Mo, since you are on the frequency, how about I tell you what I found in a pile of dirty clothes? Yeah, user disconnected from your channel, user disconnected from your channel, just how long ago did you throw that hamburger into the pile? It is not even white, it's a piece of soil by now. Also, you traitors. I, how about you nag me later? I'm helping a crying girl right now. Ah, that. He was in the library the last time I saw him. Now, back to the topic. I muted the radio. Big Sis said he is in the library. 
Really, just why would he? W well, I express my gratitude for your help. I will be going then. The fiancé hurried away, leaving me heartbroken. All of my efforts were in vain. And I am sure that by now I will notice that I ignored her radio telegrams. A girl approached me, and lightly bowed her head. Oh my! It appears even you have some nobility. P. Perhaps I was too rash in judging. The girl abruptly stopped, and saw where all of the other girls were looking. Click being a hero is nice but having laced white panties on desktop is much better. V3CH89 Grandmaster's last fight drops of sweat covered my forehead. Veronica stopped running around and toying with us. The girl stopped in place, and stared at me. Swoosh Yuriko swung her jjarugi and applied a ton of skills. Ping a rainbow mass of elements and magic rained down at the girl below. However, Veronica blocked Yuriko's attack without paying her attention. Only I was reflected in her lifeless eyes. UGH. The next moment I was kicked. Veronica pushed me several meters away but I managed to maintain balance, and attacked back. I pushed forward with the katana, aiming at Veronica's chest. Unlike in the previous fights, I landed a hit on her and damaged a piece of plating. Veronica backed off, and took a stance. She did not appear to be preparing for an attack. I started to hope that she is cornered and is losing. While Yuriko and I were waiting for Veronica's next move, Patricia finished bandaging her mother's wounds, and moved closer to us. It is too much even for someone like you, Patricia said with contempt. We all will be dead. Veronica's hollow gaze was still aimed at me. Only you will be. A-R-G-H. Veronica flashed towards us, aiming her rapier right at Patricia's heart. The sword blocked the attack but it was shattered. Blade strengthening. I tried to slash Veronica. Ping the girl blocked me but I managed to draw her attention to myself. Vermilion blade. Within the second Veronica chanted. I tried to draw the divine steel katana. Ping pierce ping ping pierce 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 ping ping pierce ping 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 pierce 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 from a single attack I lost more than half of my HP. If some of the hits didn't hit the katana, I would be dead again. While I was trying to stand up, Veronica shifted her attention to Patricia. The sisters were exchanging blows non-stop. Without any results from either side, I had a bad feeling that my friend was being saved only by Veronica's delay in attacks. Instead of going all out, like she did against me, Veronica was attacking slower, and less frequently. Sisterly love in all of its glory, while Patricia was trying to make Veronica stay in one place, Yuriko tried striking from behind, and received the true attacks. A series of rapid pierces made the woman shed blood everywhere. Before dealing a final blow, Veronica suddenly withdrew the rapier. Once again, Veronica backed off, giving us, the three panting and bleeding messes, some time to catch breath. Why don't you just stop? No matter how injured we are, one of us is a destroyer with a huge pool of HP and we have quantitative superiority. I had a slim hope because Veronica too was not looking as neat as she was. The small plates of metal on her dress were all battered. Veronica even had some small wounds. It was clear that we had a chance. I will stop only when I am dead. Veronica rushed at Yuriko. No matter how swiftly Patricia and I moved. The woman was already covered in additional wounds. Yuriko used another bunch of skills. Burdening her body even further. Grandmaster's prowess. A rain of magic was pierced by the rapier, and turned into scattering particles of light. Are you serious? Yuriko whispered, before losing consciousness. Drop dead already. Patricia and I tried overwhelming Veronica. Our combined attack was enough to break through the girl's defense, and wound her arm. What's up? Are you losing your grip Tilda? P. Of course not. Everything goes just like I want it. I glanced at Patricia, and saw that she is wounded too. Don't mind it. P. We tried to attack again but Veronica avoided us by jumping away. What is it, sister? Are you trying to run away, Tilda? P. 
Patricia continued teasing Veronica, even though she was barely standing. Just as planned. V, let's take her down. P, Pink Grandmaster's prowess. V, we attacked once again, breaking through Veronica's block. Patricia was kicked away, and fainted. The nearby area was now clear of obstacles. The katana blocked the rapier, and I found an opening. Bang 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 I discharged the guns from point blank. When the dust settled, I saw Veronica standing on her knee. The rapier was broken. So was the girl. You lost. I lost. V, now. Kill me. V, W what? Just. Kill. Me. Veronica raised her head, and looked at me with her dead fish eyes. Now, she the blade. I heard from behind. V3 CH90, facing the puppeteer shivers ran down my spine. I didn't sense anyone behind me, until a female talked. Even though I have a strong and dreadful Veronica in front of me, I still had to turn around. I kept the divine steel katana at ready. When I turned around, the first thing I saw was a Sefaku uniform. I measured the sudden guest from head to toes. She was not a normal human. On top of her jet black hair were foxes, and from her lower back were growing fox tails. Who the hell are you? I prepared for a combat. The fox girl spared me a glance, and then stared at Veronica. It does not concern you. Your job here is done. She walked closer to Veronica, and lifted the girl's chin. Veronica looked at me, and whispered, Kill. Me. Your answer? The fox girl stepped aside, giving me a clear opening to strike at Veronica. I had no desire to do it. Sometimes I feel like you did help us from the shadows. Not to mention, it is not up to me to be a judge and headsman. I am not going to kill you. Veronica's dead fish eyes started filling with tears. Then, the fox girl turned the girl's head. You see Tilda, your little rebellion was of no use. Your destiny is set in stone. The fox girl hit Veronica with her palm, and knocked her unconscious. You, you are still here? The girl looked at me apathetically, and tried to pick up Veronica. Where are you taking her? It is none of your con. Before she finished, I swung the divine steel katana. Ping the all-cutting blade was deflected by an aginata that appeared in the girl's hands out of nowhere. Fool. She swung the blade at me but I successfully blocked it. I tried to counterattack, while the aginata was still driven by inertia. ARGH. The weapon's pull hit my leg, and I fell down. Before the girl managed to split me in two, I rolled away and stood up. Once again. I tried attacking, and rushed with the tip of the katana aimed at the girl. She elegantly stepped aside, like a matador. I barely managed to block the Najnata, which was aimed at my back. Unlike with Veronica, the fox girl didn't play around with me. She was aiming to kill. I launched attack after attack, the girl blocked them with ease. Ping when she swung the Najnata again, I blocked the blade with the katana, and pushed I away. The staggered girl was about to be cut, when something pushed me away. Foolish creature. In the next second, the Najnata was already in front of me. Ugh. If I didn't sacrifice my arm, then I would be dead by now. Dying is painful, dying is scary. Got you. Swoosh I cut the girl's side, making her jump away from me. The problem is, she was at her perfect range for striking. Sorry for the intrusion. I tried closing the distance but I almost had my head threaded on the blade. I could only dance around, to avoid being cut by the swift thrusts of the Najnata. Just from a glance I could tell that the girl is more experienced with it than I am. I tried to do anything but I was running out of options. We both were wounded but the difference is that I am showering everything with blood. The girl's green eyes were mesmerizing. I had some time to notice that the girl simply doesn't care about our fight. Her face showed neither fear, nor anger. Ping I found a good moment, and deflected the Najnata, ducking below the blade and approaching the girl. I could only get a bit closer but not break the stalemate. Swoosh ARGH, damn IT. Before I noticed it, I fell down and couldn't stand up. 
My pool of HP was rapidly draining. Ping 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 the girl used my situation, and attacked me again and again. I barely parried her strikes but after she tried to slam through the block, I saw an opening. Thrust KHA. She leapt away with another wound. I tried standing up, and noticed that one of my legs was cut off. I was now completely in defense. The disparity in our skills was somehow negligible. Even in my situation, I could block her thrusts, and found an opening or two. I tried leaping with the remnants of a body I have, and was wounding her. Not as seriously as she did to me, however. Ping ping after another exchange of blocks and parries, the girl suddenly stepped back. Not what I expected. The girl looked at me with some curiosity, and instead of continuing to fight me, she walked towards Veronica. Don't you dare. She stopped. Dot maybe? She murmured and turned around. Sleep. She blew some dust on me, and I lost consciousness. Four sisters no 48. For a long time I was thinking about why Big Sis Iowa was spending so much time and effort teaching the students. Here in the academy, she could be doing absolutely nothing and be praised for it. Mo and the freak are actually enjoying that, but for some reason Iowa works a lot. Now you just need to divide this equation by two. See? Thank you. Now it is much easier to understand. The blue-haired girl smiled, and shook my hand. I spent a lot of time and efforts teaching a bunch of noble girls. At first it was super dull but after I dropped into teaching, I started to catch myself thinking about what I should be teaching them, how to make sure they are doing better, and so on. Miss Wisconsin, can you explain this? A girl pushed me a workbook with a cubic equation. Aha, look here. If you move the 7 here, and then have the x be out of brackets, you will have a standard quadratic equation. Thank you. Another happy customer tilde. Funny thing is. I actually feel nice teaching others. Maybe it is the reason Big Sis is so hooked on it. It was already evening when the study session was over. I checked the time, and announced, All right, girls. Time's out. Put your workbooks here. Keep practicing, and you'll be golden. Now, sweeties, let's cool our heads, shall we Tilda? Ding 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 I rung a bell, and a minute later maids brought a lot of juice. We were chatting and discussing the current events at the academy, when one of the girls moved her seat closer. Uh, Miss Wisconsin, can you tell us, are we doing well? Will we be able to pass the examination? All talks stopped, and all eyes turned to me. Yeah, you're doing well, girls. I'm proud of you. I guarantee that you'll pass everything they'll be throwing at you. So, heads up and puff up your chests. Even if we put pads there, we would not compare to the chest. Ha, huh? hey, what are you talking about? Don't be like that freak of a sister. The girls giggled, and we continued chatting. When it was almost the time to go home, somebody knocked in the door, and entered. What a sight to behold. It was the platinum blonde. My my, what are you doing here? Seriously? Did nobody tell her? PB, I, I am sorry. B.H., forget it, you there, commoner, just for you to know. This is my room. S. Sorry? Now, I would like to know if the commoner is capable enough of handling her assigned duties? P.B., yes. Everyone said in unison. Excellent. The platinum blonde broke into a wide smile. She sat down at an empty seat, that was conveniently near me. I had an urge to ask the platinum blonde a question that was bothering me all the time. Why did you not ask Kaiwa to teach everybody? I know she's busy but. I already made sure that my ward is being in her care. I do not want to overwhelm her. PB, ha? Huh? Can anybody give me a translation from snobbish to human? The blue-haired girl approached me from another side, and whispered. Miss Iowa was asked to take care of the crown prince since his highness found themselves to be more comfortable near her. I gave her thumbs up, and looked at the blonde. Why the heck would he even be your ward? Because I happen to be the deputy minister of education, 
and my father happens to be entitled to be his highness tutor, whenever my father is unavailable, I am in charge of the curriculum, any questions? PB, nah, I got it, good, let us have some rest after another hard day. The blonde nodded to herself, and turned around towards the exit, moving on, to the reason I happened to come here only after the studying was over, bring in the ribs. Uh, when the door opened, the maids brought in something unexpected, just from the smell alone I understood a good servant must always be rewarded for their loyalty. PB. It is the heavenly dish, known as pork ribs. V3CH91 An unexpected end of the war when I woke up, I found myself back at the ship. Rattle my hand was chained to the bed, and nobody was around. I applied a bit of a force, and torn the chain off. I could feel that somebody is on the ship, somewhere at the bridge. I started sneaking through the hallways while I was here. I checked the other crew quarters, and found all of the people who participated in Veronica's subjugation. All except Veronica herself. Since I am a cat girl, I tried to squeeze into the ventilation to shortcut the way to the bridge. Weirdly enough, I fitted perfectly and started crawling forward. With my perfect knowledge of the ship, and the ability to control the internal mechanisms, I creeped up without hindrances, before breaking into the bridge. I looked around through a grill. The bridge appeared to be empty. I only managed to notice a shadow casted by someone standing out of my field of view. Rattle I broke the grill and crawled out. Before I could draw the katana, I recognized the perpetrator. It looks like you're awake. Veronica turned around and nodded. The dead fish eyes were replaced with less scary looks. Are you going to fight anybody? The girl shook her head, and showed the scabbard. The rapier was not there. Why would she? I jumped up and gripped the katana when I heard a voice behind me. It was that fox girl. She had a grilled bird on a stick in her hand. Isn't that one of those seagulls? Everything is better than being starved. Did those people wake up? The fox girl gave the poor bird to Veronica, and approached me. Who the hell are you and what have you forgotten on my ship? Answer my question. Field goal, they didn't. Well, well, I thought you would at least see it through. The fox girl glanced at Veronica, making the girl shiver. I answered your question. Now answer mine. Have you asked me anything? The girl looked at me with a ridicule the hell are you doing here? I just saved you all, and have to stay here while everybody is recuperating. A vein popped up on my forehead. Then who are you? Does it matter? Field goal, yes. I am Yuri. Field goal, field goal, and that's it? No fancy titles, or anything? Would I need them? I started to feel an approaching headache. Whatever, now that I woke up, you can get the hell away from my ship. You are not required here. I see. Let's go. Yuri beckoned Veronica, and the girl limply approached her. Leave Veronica here. The girl stopped. Why should I? From now on why is for Yuri, and go for Yuriko, because I said so. Your opinion matters not. Why, Veronica, say you don't want to go? I called out to the meek girl. Neither does her opinion. Or have you decided to try again? A predatory smile appeared on the fox girl's apathetic face when she moved closer to Veronica. The girl started shivering and shook her head fervently. Seeing that Veronica is somehow afraid of that person, I drew the divine steel katana. A foolish idea. You already lost, and yet you think you have a chance? Why? She clearly doesn't want to go with you. Stop coercing her. Either she goes with me, or I stay with her. There is no way I would let go of her until she finishes what she is destined to do. If I was an anime girl, I would have my entire forehead covered in popping veins by now. And what is the thing she has to do? Nothing much. She just has to kill the Demon King. Why? clanging of the brain cogs a light bulb turns on like in novels. Yuri facepamed and waved her hand. Only then I understood that I said something stupid. Teach an idiot how to pray, and he will smash his forehead. Why, well, 
Sorry. Why the hell should Veronica be killing that demon king? Why is it even the first time I am hearing about its existence? Why do I have to bear with this idiot? Why? Well, sorry. Nobody explained me that master plan of yours. Ha, huh, fine. I will have to explain everything from the beginning. Otherwise you will be dumbing for a long time. Why? Well, sorry for being slow. An important Pearl Plus announcement announcement volume 4 is confirmed to happen in the future. I will start writing the guidelines for it after I finish rewriting the V1. For now I don't know if I will be writing chapters in advance and posting them on Patreon. The end of the year is approaching, and my master's thesis does too. The frequency of released V3 chapters will be somewhat the same but the frequency of rewriting V1 chapters will fully depend on how much I will have to be rewriting. V4 itself may be postponed until midsummer. As always, comments and views are the most appreciated and help me keep writing. With the approaching end of the main storyline for Idoroi of War whatever its abbreviature is, it is the time to raise the question of rewriting the V1. It was my first serious and successful attempt at writing, and many people already voiced their dissatisfaction with the quality of V1. I too plan to rewrite a part of the volume but I would like to know if the readers have a different opinion on what I should be rewriting there. I am absolutely going to rewrite the arc 1, the first 30 chapters, and the hurried ending, from my point of view. The chapters in arc 2 and arc 3? Chapters 31 to 90, are fine. Keep in mind, that the more chapters I would have to rewrite, the more time it would take, and I would have to work hard IRL too, so the frequency will depend on the amount of work I will have to do. V3 CH92 The heroes of the steel ship a long time ago, back then when the gods were creating this world, the creator decreed that to make the worlds prosper. There must be both light and darkness. When humanity was created, the humans started fighting each other, like the most vicious and savage of animals. Which is why. I stopped Yuri. Can you please tell it shorter? Because the mortals were killing each other all the time, and were too close to eradicating each other, the creator decided that there must be a force that would make the mortals join their efforts. Thus the demon kings were settled in every world, somewhere they were laying dormant, until it was time to act, somewhere they woke up from their slumber and done a lot of stuff, before disappearing until required. Why? Okay, I see. And this world's demon king has awoken? Because this world is flawed, and some of its gods are failures. The demon king did not wake up, and things went out of control. The sea monsters were supposed to be part of the demon king's army but instead they are roaming everywhere. Luckily, there is a force that can subjugate a demon king. Why, a hero? Yes, the abnormal existence that defies laws of the creator, even though is part of them. It all goes like you would expect, a hero, driven by sense of justice, goes to fight a demon king, in process unifying a world's powers. However. Our case is the most special. Yuri sighed. Now we need to reignite this struggle. There is a hero but there is no demon king to fight. Thus, we need to wake up the demon king and fight him. Then the world should return to the way it was supposed to be. I pretended that I understood what is going on. The fox girl continued sighing. She appeared to be tired of everything. What if it doesn't go like that? You think I was sent here for no reason? Either I succeed, or this world will be deemed a failure. The consequences are grim. Why? How about we ask for the other's help? If it's that bad, everybody will agree to help, right? That girl's little vagary did contribute a bit. We looked at Veronica. The girl was standing in a corner, without any desire to participate in our conversation. Meanwhile, Everybody woke up. I will go meet everyone. They must be shocked. Go, please. Why? I went to the crew quarters. My comrades were looking around in days, and tried to understand what happened. Everybody. I'm here. We are on my ship. Are we? P. Yes. It's alright. Everybody is safe. 
What about that thing? A. Veronica is safe too. Wait. I had to grip Alba, who radiated her desire to murder. How about we all calm down and talk this through? There was a lot of weird stuff going on lately. I led everybody to the bridge. As we approached closer, Eureka was becoming stiffer. I'm back. I entered, and didn't see anybody. Yuri, Veronica, where are you? Don't tell me that Fox took Veronica. Murmurs I followed the sound of murmurs, and looked behind the navigation table. I saw Veronica there, she was shivering and murmuring something. I could barely get one word, monster. Even when I turned around to look at the others with a smile, they all were feeling uneasy, and all were on guard. H how about we all calm down, and relax? I tried to lift the curled up girl. When Veronica stood up, she started panting and gasping, making everybody feel even less safe. Let go of her for a moment. Eureka approached us first. She's yours. I entrusted Veronica to her. Eureka poked the girl a couple of times, until she was satisfied with something. There is no doubt, the puppeteer is gone. So, what is gone? Albu approached us too. Previously there was a strong energy surging around her. Now, I do not feel any unusual energy from this girl. After Eureka's confirmation I sighed in relief. You are relaxing a bit too early. All of my senses are numb. Whatever happened here, it overwhelms me. Be cautious. So, may it be related to the Demon King? Ha! Huh? Everybody was stupefied, except for Eureka. The woman was stiffened. You read too many fairy tales? P. We had a chat with Yuri. The thing that possessed Veronica. She was possessed? That explains it. Alba glanced at Veronica. How about we start preparing for action? If the Demon King is. Hold your horses, hothead. We better return to the city of Benizio, and deal with the mess we have made. The ramble about the Demon King can wait. Neither of us in shape to do anything. Alba pushed Veronica somewhere into a far corner, and approached the windows. Fine, I'll start moving then. I ordered Ferry to come here, and moved the ship towards the harbor. It was indeed weird to think of fighting a demon king while we all are barely standing. Four sisters no forty-nine. Doors opened and a girl stepped inside. Everyone looked at her, and some smirked. The seasoned adventurers, all covered in scars, were wondering what a young girl has forgotten in the adventurers guild's office. The staff and clerks prepared to put the girl's request, as well as receive the reward money, and a tip. The girl calmly walked towards the reception, when a huge muscular man with scars all over his face blocks her way and says, Where are you going, little princess? And the girl answers, None of your business, idiot. She pushes him away and approaches the counter and says with a cool expression, I'm here to sell some loot. The clerks look at her in bewilderment and say, Well, okay, we'll process your hair hide. The girl pulls out her storage bag and shakes out a dragon's head. Mo, do you have nothing else to do? Whiskey stands up and heads to the exit. Come on. Won't it be super cool? A mysterious adventurer shocks everybody with an unprecedented feat. Sorry, Mo. You won't surprise anyone with this much. We killed those flying lizards left and right. Most of the clerks nearby know our faces better than their mothers. I was stood up too. Well, count me out on this. I already have a stupid lizard somewhere nearby. New Jersey prepared to leave too. But, big sis. Please Tilda. Please, please, please Tilda. I'll be a good girl Tilda. Ha, Mo, I can't help you. I'm busy with my work. I'll be going. Iowa and New Jersey left, leaving me only with whiskey. Sorry, I've got... We now then, my dear comrade in arms. Let's go kill us a dragon. Wait, I'm not going any. I grabbed her by hand and dragged after me. Otherwise Whiskey will finish her sentence, and there will be no stepping back. If you know how to handle her, she will obediently follow you anywhere. Just why me? Ain't you capable of doing it yourself? Whiskey kicked away a pebble. 
Of course I need your help, I wouldn't have anybody to chat with on the way. Why me? Why not call Iowa? Why not spend time with that freak? That jerk has nothing else to do. With. But of course because there is only one girl that I can actually rely on. When you need someone mature and reliable, someone capable of accomplishing such a hard job, of course calling you is the only answer. Whiskey blushed and coughed. W well, if you plead me so much, I may help you for a bit. Only because otherwise I'd be stuck with that freak of a sister. I sighed out in my mind. Now that I secured myself a not grumbling whiskey, I can get to the second part of my plan. We climbed to the top of a hill, and I shouted, Hey, you flying lizards, come here, or I'll tell everybody that dragons are just a bunch of cowardly wing lizards. When I turned around, I saw whiskey's look of disappointment. Come on, you know those guys show up only when they have their pride hurt. Couldn't you just go find them? while I'm staying here to back you up? You ain't running away on my watch. Whiskey, I didn't tell you earlier but she is following us. Whiskey immediately tucked her skirt to hide the underwear. New Jersey actually did follow us but she messaged me to keep it silent. In exchange for a pants a shot she agreed to provide backup. That's the circulation of hunters in the world. Whiskey hunts dragons, Engie hunts her underwear. Whiskey hunts Angie, and then gets fooled by Angie. Something is on the radar. For example? Wh For example, someone's cute peaches tilde. NJ, smack you? Before things spiral out of control, I reminded them about the dragon. Guys, we've got a huge lizard coming in. Ready the guns. I'll kill you. Got it, you jerk. Wh when the dragon appeared from above the clouds, the Bofa's guns opened fire. Bum 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 The combined AA might of three battleships turned the dragon's wings into sieve. The three of us made smug faces when we looked at the foolish young dragon. She's all yours, Tilda. I winked a new jerksy, thus stopping the dreaming of honor whiskey from stealing my laurel. Even from a town where I found the closest guild's branch office, I could hear gunfire. Kick I kick opened the doors and entered. Everybody looked at me. Some giggled that I am a sexy princess. However, there were no bulky guys stopping me, and the clerks just glanced at me before I approached the queue. When it was finally my turn. Good day to you, miss. Oh, damn it. It's that Missouri I am thinking about. Is it another dragon? Just a second. I'll call someone to bring coins from the special stash. My entire plan was ruined. Well, on my way back I bought a wagon of lemons, so Big Sis will make us something refreshing. V3CH93. Peace in Benicio when we approached the port, I saw that docking is impossible. The Allied forces built a bunch of temporary piers to let ironclads dock outside of the port. Inside the port were battered ironclads and frigates. Even after seeing it for the second time, Emmanuel couldn't utter a word. All of the ships here were not sunk completely for one reason. They hit the bottom before their hulls submerged completely. We could barely find a free pier, only because a frigate undocked, and we approached before a slow ironclad could. Right when we disembarked and walked off the pier, two soldiers approached. One of them was a purple coat, and the other was in western uniform. Emmanuel approached his compatriot and talked about something. The man's voice was slowly becoming higher. My apologies. I am called by the command. I will return later. Emmanuel waved us a file with a couple of documents sticking out, and ran after the soldier. Alba too was asked to hurry to the palace. What do you think happened? I asked Patricia. I have no idea. I know about the current events only from merchants and deserters. Things have changed a lot since I left. The girl was looking around while we walked. The city was looking like one would expect from a city that just faced a war. All the windows were either covered with planks, or shattered. The streets were still littered with rubble and pieces of barricades. Some of the barricades were still not dismantled, and some of the explosion craters were not filled. After the fight ended, 
the civilians returned to the streets. Some shops were already opened, and had long queues in front of them. However, when our group was passing, I clearly saw that the people are disgruntled by our appearance, not even because there is me. Damn traitors. I wish I joined the militia back then. You murderers. If not for us being armed, I am sure many of those people would not hesitate to throw stones at us. When we arrived to our destination, the doge's office, I immediately asked Alba, Why are they so hostile? Whatever you do, people will remember it, and exaggerate it. Alba nonchalantly looked through thick stacks of papers that were piling up in the office. Just what did you do? I doubt there are things that can make an entire city wish to kill us. I happened to hijack the newest flagship, persuade a battalion of the Republican Guards to mutiny, kidnap Doge's daughter, as well as form the most dangerous band of pirates in the history. That is all without mentioning our maritime activity. I applauded in silence. Even I have no idea if that applause is out of sincere admiration or out of sincere irony. We should not cry over spilled milk. We better decide what we are going to do. Eureka stopped us all from becoming too gloomy. You are right. How about we do some charity? Hearts and minds, you know? Find us money for that. Patricia glanced at me. I decided to look through my stuff, since I am going to dive into my electronic pocket. Ding you received 813 upgrade points, 17 copper coins, 7 silver coins, 9 gold coins IJN Kirin Army, DDL. Upgrade points, 0. Torpedoes, 2230. HP, 3700. High 100%. AU 95%. 2865 nanometers 5 dual turrets full upgrade 24 quintuple torpedo mount oxygen torpedo storage to 1481 two thousandths would that be enough i put a bag of coins on the desk there were 12 copper coins 90 silver coins and nine gold coins that should be enough only to buy a loaf of bread for every citizen a Still, that's better than nothing. While we were trying to argue about what we are to do about the discontent, we heard some shouting from outside. All of us looked through the window and saw a large crowd of people, shouting something. In front of them was walking a blonde girl, also known as the Radiant Son of Benizio. Veronica was not looking like she had anything to do with the crowd. But the closer the crowd was approaching, the clearer we heard down with the traitors, and return the seat to the radiant sun. That little. Alba gripped the window sill so hard that I heard a crackle. Only when Veronica passed through the palace gates did the crowd stop. They were stopped by troopers, who had bayonets at ready. A couple minutes later the door opened, and Veronica stepped in. I'm back Tilda. The usual cheerful Veronica smiled at us, making Alba crush the poor piece of wood once again. Then I saw a shadow detach from Veronica, and turn into Yuri. Now Veronica was much less radiant about the thing I mentioned prior. Yuri suddenly glanced at Patricia. What the hell are you? The girl drew her sword. V3CH94, forming the dream team the fox girl suddenly smiled. Her smile sent shivers down my spine, and possibly not only mine. It was the same smile Veronica used. I am the one who guided this silly girl all this time. Yuri stopped freaking us out with a smile, and returned her apathetic expression. This doesn't answer my question. P. I have no obligation of answering. Why, while Patricia was slowly starting to boil, somebody knocked. Enter. Alba signed to stop the useless argument. The door opened, and Emmanuel stepped in. I'm back. I would like to discuss the compensation for losing our. Who is this? That is the first time I see this person. The man stopped right after seeing Yuri, and immediately stared at the girl's tails. It is our first time too. Perhaps not Kirin armies, however. Alba noticed the tails too. Yuri possessed a trait, unusual for fox girls. She has three tails. No, we all met her. Yuriko stepped forward, 
so dear jury. Uh, everybody was surprised. The two lilies looked at each other calmly. Then Yuriko started walking around the girl. She is just a child? Co, oh, only to you. Yuri brushed off her words. Does it mean anything important? Yuriko surprised me by this question. Hey, guys. We are lost here. Patricia's shout returned them to this perishable earth. I am Yuri. I was tasked with. The fox girl retold the short version of the world's story. As one would expect, few believed her. Don't make me laugh. As if that monster would be a hero. Eh, what a foolish superstitious story. We explored everything, and we know that. E. How about you ask that stupid kid? Yuri pointed at me. I'll get you one day, got it? I silently clenched my fists. Everyone looked at me, except for Yuriko. I think she says truth. Let's sort through the facts. We have a ridiculously powerful Veronica over there. I pointed at the silently standing girl. Alba, was she always strong? Yes. Since her birth she was a demon spawn, no less. A. Can neither of you, mother and daughter, tell me if she was crazy right from the start? They both looked away, and pretended not to hear. No. Patricia murmured. She was supposed to be the good guy, right? I looked at Yuri. She confirmed it with a nod. Next. We have a failure of a god. The usually calm woman was infuriated. I. Am. Not. A failure. Since she did not deny. Finally. We have a load of monsters all over the seas. And we've seen ridiculously huge things in the abyss. Once again, nobody denied. I don't know about you but I feel like we've got the entire kit required to believe this story. I nodded to Yuri. Believing me is up to you. Most of the subjugation would be done by the hero, since the demon king is supposed to be defeated by her. Why, and then what? A. Then everything will follow the destined route. I felt like she missed the point. Destined? Ha! Huh? I would rather fight monsters, than have a forever resurrecting wicked being, like demons, or this thing. Alba turned away, and returned to paperwork. I too find it stupid. Patricia joined her mother. It sounds too dubious. Sorry but I will not be calling for help. Emmanuel leaned on a wall. It looks like it will be the four of us, then. Eureka sighed and approached me so close, that she kissed my ear. Sorry for not telling about this. I did not think there would be a hero born before my death. Then she stood behind my back and rested on my back. Stare I felt murderous intent from my side. When I glanced there, I saw Patricia drilling us with a glare. Veronica too was paying attention, even though she was passive all the time. Alba tugged the girl closer and very quietly whispered something. With every second of whispering, Patricia's face was becoming redder. Then Alba patted Patricia's shoulder, and pushed her to me. W well, it can't be helped that you will require my help. I am doing it only because you are going to risk your life, and since we are already used to working together, I will do it for your sake. P. I am happy to have you aboard. I like you very much. The girl's face turned crimson. Stare Veronica emitted such a murderous intent that I wondered if we can stop her if she is unleashed. Pom however, Yuri stopped the girl with a single clap. Well, I might think about adding second girl to my harem. V3CH95 Subjugation team's last preparations everything was settled. I guess we should start preparing for subjugation? I glanced at the others. Emmanuel pretended not to hear me. It was nice knowing you. I approached the man. It was my pleasure. I will definitely petition the Emperor to commemorate your actions. Some of them. I shook his hand, and approached Alba. Then, suddenly, she dragged me closer. If even a strand of hair falls from Patricia's head, you bet I will not give my blessings. You hear me? I nodded eagerly. We will be staying here to provide logistical support. You can follow those fairy tales all you want. Just do return safely. Except for you. Alba glared at Veronica, and Yuri. Our subjugation team returned to the ship, and started waiting for fairy's arrival. The transport arrived the next day, 
and I immediately headed out to meet her. When I arrived on her bridge, the nurse was in prostration. H E L L O F H. How about you rest for a bit? Fairy nodded and immediately lied down on the floor. The ship was still moving. After I somehow figured out the controls, I stopped the transport and moved the nurse to a bed. While she was sleeping, I checked the holds. She had the oil tanks filled to the brim, and the cargo hold was filled with steel plates and spare parts for engines. She was clearly preparing for a long sail, where the squadron will wear out all mechanical parts of the ships. That evening I gathered everybody relevant to the upcoming subjugation. In the captain's cabin were Fairy, I, Patricia, Veronica, Yuri, and Yuriko. Let's start with the logistics. Is everything ready? I asked the poor insomniac nurse. I made sure to have all spare parts required for the routine maintenance for all ships for 10,000 nautical miles of traveling, unless you keep torturing the machinery with constant changing of speed for no reason. A couple of needles stabbed my conscience. Fighting forces are ready? Ready for everything, Patricia said unenthusiastically. You better pay more attention, child, if all goes like I expect it. We are going to have a tough fight ahead of us. Yuriko glanced at the fox girl. You don't need to look at me. I too have no idea what is going to happen in reality. That is why we better prepare for worst. Yuri summoned an Aginata. I'm glad to see everyone is so lively. We are going to set sail tomorrow. Fairy, you can sleep here. If you want it. I managed to calm the nurse down before she started to beat her head against the wall. When everybody headed to beds, I caught Veronica, and dragged her out to the deck. Are you alright? The girl was not looking fine, and I must make sure she is feeling fine. Yes. V. Your yes doesn't assure me. I am destined to do it. I have to do it. I started shaking her. I have no idea if I was doing it in a hope that it will break a hypnosis, or to try getting some reaction. Come on, just speak. I'm not going to blame you for anything. Speak up your mind. I, for years she was teaching me. I saw what it may bring. The other worlds. I don't. I can't discern if it was a dream, or a reality. I was petting the girl, and trying to reassure her. S she, s she said I will be able to keep them together. But the stronger I was, the further they drifted apart. I better ask her if she wants to go fight the Demon King. Do you want to fight the Demon King? She nodded. Then, let's do our best. Shall we? I'm on your side, so don't worry. That fox girl won't hurt you. If I'm here. Veronica livened up. While you are here, in safety. How about you go talk to Patricia? I wish I could see you two as cheerful as here. I showed her the small painting. For a second she hesitated but took the picture. She will not. But I will try. For your sake. Veronica headed inside. At the same time the bulkhead door closed. I heard steps from behind. Not bad, though. I doubt it will work. Yuri put her elbows on the railings. Why won't you try to cheer her? Should I? She made them hate her. Even though I told her to focus on preparations for the fight. Why, the court condemns you to be guilty. So why not try helping her? The fox girl chuckled. Before disappearing in a smoke, I stayed outside until midnight. Only then I headed inside. When I entered the captain's cabin, I was immediately caught. What were you talking about? Patricia hugged me from behind. A bit of this, and a bit of that. Why are you here? I was just curious. Maybe I was hiding from her too. I'll be going now, since you don't plan to talk. The girl let go of me, and headed to the door. It was my turn to catch her. Where do you think you're going Tilda? Sneaking into a maiden's room, deep in the night Tilda? How about we sleep together Tilda? I slowly tugged the quiet girl to the bed. Four sisters no fifty. In between my hard work I decided to hang out. Luckily, there was a nice little tea party in the palace, organized by the queen. The invitation specifically mentioned not to bring Angie, and I happily obliged. It was an indoor tea party, 
there was nothing surprising going on. Noble ladies chatted, drank tea, licks pittled to their superiors, and badmouthed their rivals. I was about to call New Jersey to save me from this hell, and already started typing the message, when I felt something unexpected. There was an unknown radio emitter nearby. I immediately started searching for a suitable excuse to leave this tea party. The usual flower viewing won't work in my case. They will never let me stay unattended. When I found a nice looking excuse, I approached the queen, simultaneously with her attendant. One moment, Miss Iowa. You may want to hear this. The queen beckoned the attendant to speak. The last guest on the list has arrived. Your Majesty. The attendant stepped aside, and the Queen looked at me with gratification. As I said Tilda, you may want to postpone leaving Tilda. I raised my hands, and returned to the tables. Five minutes later the doors opened, and a lady in a sky blue cloak entered. She started with approaching the Queen and greetings. The two of them quietly discussed something, and the Queen stood up, and led the lady to me. Miss Iwa. Allow me to present you Baroness Delight. She happened to come a long way, and I would be most pleased if you entertained her for now. The Queen pushed the lady forward, and retreated before we had a chance to catch her. Oh my, allow me to greet you properly. I am Delight, Baroness of the neighboring kingdom, and Her Majesty's faithful servant. The lady performed curtsy. H. Hi, I'm Iowa. Then I bit my tongue. Oh my. Indeed, I do wish to make an acquaintance. Shall we have a short conversation, Tilda? We sat down at the table and started talking. We were talking for a long time and enjoyed our time. Nobody tried approaching the table, and only maids were interrupting our dialogue for another cup of tea. When the tea party ended, instead of parting ways, we went for a walk. It is wonderful to have somebody understanding me so well. D. Yeah. It's great. The source of the radio signal was evident, since it kept on moving together with the lady. How about we go for a short sail? Please, allow me to participate then, Tilda. We giggled, and headed to the port. In the far away outskirt of the port, where the battleships were standing while they are not used by us, was anchored another ship. Wait, is that Hood? Oh my, you jest, Tilda. I am in no way as vulnerable as my Aunt Tilda. The lady giggled. Then, how about we go for a sail, Tilda? We smiled at each other. Battleship and battle cruiser ventured out into the open sea. I suggest we speed up a bit. Setting speed to 20 knots. D. Speed to 20 knots. I. There is a nice group of islands nearby. How about we visit them? Oh my. I do enjoy watching nature from the sea. D. Soon we were sailing past a large island. I, and quite possible the lady, was watching the moonlit forests and shores. It is majestic. What do you think? Even through emotionless pinging of radio telegraph I could feel the lady's emotions. Indeed, I like it too. Soon we both understood that sailing together is one thing. Walking on the water is another. I find this idea intriguing. Shall we continue? We sailed hand in hand. All of my worries melted away together with my fatigue. However, soon the morning came. I wish we could continue like this. However I have to go write the darned research. Indeed, it was the most satisfying sailing. I wonder if it would be possible to enjoy a cup of tea with you when I return from the circumnavigation. The lady giggled. I escorted her to the battle cruiser, and we parted ways. Sigh 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 okay, okay. What happened? I. Finally, I thought I will have to sigh for an entire day until she notices. I met such a wonderful person. Great. N.J., I am sure you would get along with her too. Wonderful. N.J., ah, if only I could spend more time with her. Please, tell me more. N.J., will it kill you to stop playing that game? Ha, someone like you would never get a maiden's heart. Come on, I. I just got another maiden's heart, look. I glanced at the screen. Coming to think about it, it would be better if somebody like you never approaches girls at all. Said I. 
while looking at a 2D butt. V3CH96. Destination, Abyss Patricia woke up alone, after a passionate night of hugging and cuddling with me. She at least expected to have morning coffee but I had other plans. When the girl dressed up and left the captain's cabin, the machinery was already up and running. Thanks to Ferry's mobile base, I didn't require to spend a few days heating up the boilers and other parts of steam engines machinery. In a few hours the entire squadron was ready for action, even though we idled in the port for almost an entire week. Now that the ships undocked and started maneuvering out of the port, everybody was waking up while the crew was dressing up and washing. I was drinking some morning coffee to keep me running during the day nocturnal feline nature, and stuff. Do you have a safe place for a campfire? I was taken aback by a sudden question that came from behind. When I turned around, I saw Yuri with another poor seagull victim. Why don't you eat something normal? Sorry but I am not a fan of dried food. The fox girl went somewhere, probably to gut the seagull. Our crew has taken another casualty, while I was mourning another loss. Veronica showed up. Good morning Tilda. Have you slept well Tilda? I asked the girl. She mumbled something, and moved to the windows. To the furthermost point away from Yuri. Muir Tilda. Good morning, people Tilda. Oh, it's just cure an army here. Patricia walked in the bridge, still with a toothbrush in the mouth. Good to see you. How about you girls go somewhere and... I'd rather not see her. Get lost, sister. Patricia rumbled. You girls are just something. I sighed, and prepared to order the squadron to regroup for the sailing. The last to arrive was Eureka. So, are we all ready for an adventure? Everybody nodded. Great. Setting course for the abyss. We had to sail all the way to the western edge of Benetian territories. After a week of traveling we were ready to face anything unexpected. So, what are we going to search for? I asked Yuri. We are searching for the Demon King's castle. Why? I wonder if it is alright for such an anachronism to be here. It was supposed to be on par with everything around but thanks to some failures of this world. She glanced at Yuriko. Stop it, will you? Better tell us what exactly we are searching for? There should be an island here. As you might know, this area has a bit more than no islands at all. The one we are searching for is going to be protected by a lot of monsters, and will be covered by fog. Why, that is when I come in handy? Your abilities may prove useful. The fox girl confirmed. Then, how about we start working, people? When we approached the abyss, I ordered the squadron to set up a search line. A.K.A. a line abreast with a huge interval between the ships. We widened our sonar coverage and visual detection range. Fairy was dragging behind me, a mile away. We decided to start searching from the north of the shipping routes, which were near the world's equator. It was a routine sailing back and forth from one part of the abyss to the other. We were crossing it again, and again, and again. Day 20 of our travel. We are yet to encounter anything noteworthy. I was lying on the navigation table like a spread out blanket. I set the course, and the ships were just sailing in a straight line for days. Hence my boredom. I only livened up when I picked a radar contact. It was a really huge contact. We have an emergency. Something flying is approaching, and it is huge. I tried looking through binoculars but the distance was too large. Whatever. Firing. Bang bang whatever I was firing at. It didn't try changing direction or flying away. I was scoring hits after hits, and soon something flew out of the clouds. Well, we will have a lot of fried fish tonight. I looked at a huge body of flying fish on its way to the water surface. By the way, the radar contact did not disappear from its place in the sky. Those things shouldn't pose a threat to us, right? No, they shouldn't. Patricia gulped saliva. Will they heal if they are wounded? From the wounds you inflict? Maybe. Eureka, you have any idea? P. They have good regeneration abilities. The woman confirmed that I don't need to kill them for mercy. Then, 
Let's go and pick it up. I smiled, while I increased speed. A minute later, the sonar went crazy, and suddenly something huge popped out of the water with the flying fish in its jaws. Rawr! And disappeared in the abyss as quickly as it showed up. Congratulations. We are close to the destination. I gave a wry smile to Yuri. Not only did I waste shells but I also let go of a large chunk of food. V3CH97. The troubles of the strongest with every mile we traveled. The density of monsters was increasing. At first we were dealing with minor nuisances, like krakens and sharks. Then we started dealing with major nuisances, like running out of fuel and having to bunch up by ferry for a few times. Ping. Oh man. Here we go again. Ping. Is that what I think it is? Patricia put the sonar's headphone to her ear. Ping yeah. Well, let's get ready then. P. Ping all ships, launch torpedoes at my 11 o'clock. Orders confirmed. Ping fire depth charges. Ping pom pom ping 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 a sea dragon had no choice but to surface after deafening rain of depth charges. An overbuffed late game squadron can't have any issues with a mid game boss. Rawr. The depth charges did barely any damage, aside from angering the monster while the sea dragon was charging at us in fury. I calmly observed the wristwatch. 10 seconds. 3. Now. Boom 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 I guess full torpedo salvo from four ships was an overkill. Let's move on. I find it funny that I was almost torn apart and burnt to death when I met such a thing for the first time. Well, I could barely fight a merchant ship at that time. I remembered my initial struggles with a nostalgic smile. Not that I wished to return to that state. No. Thank you. Afterwards, we were attacked by several schools of sea wyverns, a kraken, and a few more weird monsters. By the end of the day, I started feeling bored by my openness. Like, I can actually one salvo anything here. There are no worthy opponents for me at this stage. I was so confident in my invulnerability that I went to sleep and let the ship sail on autopilot. Dear me. How stupid I was. Boom screech I was woken up by me flying off the bed into a wall. The ship came to a sudden stop. Stats. 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 Ding warning. Multiple compartments breached. Warning. Hull breaches below the waterline. Warning. Ship ran aground. Knock knock who's there? Come out. You idiot. I almost flew overboard. What the hell were you doing? Patricia started pounding the door. One moment. I quickly searched for a ventilation to squeeze into. There were no options to hide, so I had to face the death head on. Hee <laughs> hee. Sorry? Sorry Tilda? Sorry she says Tilda? I used all of the evasion and buffs. I had to squeeze past the enraged girl, whose fingers were creeping towards my neck. When I escaped to the deck. I saw that the ship was driven ashore and the bow managed to burrow into an island's sand. The squadron's ships were sailing around in circles. The stupid day I had no idea where to sail, since I'm not moving. Meanwhile, Ferry set up the mobile base. Can I have some help? I am surprised it took you just ten minutes to start acting. I was betting on one hour, I am in a desperate situation, so let's start working. Sail here and pick up the towing cables. I don't plan on stranding myself by approaching. Just like that, we remained in place for another day. All because I was overconfident, and forgot that no matter how scarce land is here, it does exist. It took us some more time and monster fighting to encounter something truly bizarre. One morning I woke up after a short nap and was on my way to the bridge with a cup of coffee in hand. When I entered the bridge, I glanced through the windows, only to see that they all are fogged up. We have an emergency. All personnel, gather up at the bridge. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Everybody clumped up in a minute. The girls were all at different stages of preparedness. All the way from soap on the face to bed hair. All except for Yuri who was carrying a bleeding body of a seagull. First, let us mourn another loss among our ranks. Second, we are in the middle of a fog. 
we may be super close to the Demon King's castle. That's great but how are we supposed to see it through this? Patricia pointed at the windows. The visibility was so good that I won't be able to even see the bow through the windows. It's like we are a submarine in a sea of milk. I started racking my brain on what to do, until my eyes caught the fluttering corpse of the seagull. Hey, girls, what do you think about using the seagulls? Will it work out? They were made to control the weather, and fog is weather conditioned too. It is worth giving it a try. With Yuriko's uncertain affirmation I went to the deck. Whistle hey, you little bastards. Come here. I need you to do something for me. I shouted to the seagulls that nested in the least reachable places of the ship. Maybe because they are being hunted. C-A-C-A-C-A. -A -C -A -C -A. The seagulls grumbled at me. Then I revealed my trump card. If you ain't gonna help me, then I might let this huge school of fish, that is swimming right below us, to go away. All that tasty fresh fish will swim away, without being eaten. C-A-C-A-C-A. -C -A -C -A. The cawing of discontent immediately was replaced with cheerful and friendly cawing. You wait, little bastards. If you won't do your job well, I will actually set up a barbecue zone for that fox. V3CH98. 100 steps away from the goal the seagulls took off and started circling above the ship. I already got what those mercantile bastards want. The depth charges were immediately released from the stern rails, and sank towards a huge school of fish. Boom 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 the seagulls started diving at the emerging food even before the rain of seawater settled. Not earlier than they ate every single fish those bastards started heading out. The seagulls formed a long line in front of the already long search line, and miraculously the fog around the ship started scattering. The further they flew forward, the more visibility we were gaining, until the seagulls stopped a kilometer ahead of us. I bet they will demand more food. I said to Yuriko. I wonder why you feed them so eagerly but refuse to cook for me. I was also tamed by you, and expect you to take responsibility for me. I wondered too, if she is actually joking. When I glanced to the stern, I saw that the fog was covering the entire stern of the ship, those magic fogs. Just look at it, if we were sailing even slower. How about you at least turn on the navigation lights? I am completely blind here, I gulped. Fairy was trailing behind me and I am sure there is no seagull flying over her, Hanezuki, Harutsuki, set speed at 8 knots, Atsuki, Moizuki, set speed at 9 knots, regroup into Vic formation, keep the search line, the transport must enter the clearing, I rapidly made a decision, orders confirmed, fairy, can you steam at 10 knots, I will try, it took us several hours to stabilize the formation but the fact that Fairy at least could see where she goes must be worth it. The next morning, I saw that things are slowly starting to get worse. The fog became so dense, that the seagulls could only keep a clear zone of 300 meters ahead. Squadron, regroup on me. Vic formation. Protect the transport. I ordered to tighten the formation. Orders confirmed. I estimated that in three days we will reach the northern seas, and in one week we may hit a glacier. The only thing that added us some optimism about this situation is Yuri's reassurance that we are very close. It took us two more days to find something unexpected. I was preparing for a night shift. I boiled myself a dozen thermos bottles of coffee, and was going to stare at the radar screen. However, Suddenly the dense fog ahead cleared, and the squadron sailed past a fog wall into clear waters. From the way the seagulls started flying around in confusion, they did not expect it to. Everyone, we have an emergency meeting. Far ahead of us I saw some lights. We finally reached the Demon King's castle. Or so I hope. By the time everybody gathered, the squadron approached the unknown. It was possible to see the lights through the bridge windows. Even the night was unable to cover a huge installation, I guess. I guess we reached the destination? Some might expect it to be my words but it is actually said by Yuri. Then, shall we get going? 
before they spot us. Patricia looked at the others but everybody remained silent. An hour in the morning is worth two in the evening. Let us go sleep. Co, agreed. Why, V, seriously? We just arrived and you all say let's sleep? What if they spot us? What if they attack us? Patricia was becoming more and more agitated. Did I mention it by now? This demon king is defective. As is the entire world. We would walk right through the front door all the way to the king himself. Then we will kill the right now sleeping beauty. Simple as that. Only after Yuri's words Patricia surrendered. Fine. But I will be taking cure an army. Without further ado, she grabbed me and took me to the bed. After several hours of me being squished by Patricia, the team gathered at the bow. I delivered everybody to the coast, and we headed towards a huge gothic castle, decorated with gargoyles, and very suitable for the seat of the evil. We crossed a huge stone bridge all the way to the front door of the castle. Nothing was guarded. There were no traps at all. Are you sure there would be no traps inside? You are asking me like I was here before. Why, fair point. Actually, I opened huge wooden doors and peeked inside. There were no gatekeeper monsters, only an empty hallway. The insides of the castle were lit with magic lamps. There were some candelabrums but they either lacked any candles, or they were unlit. After wandering around for some time, we all agreed that if there are any monsters inside, they would be huge spiders. Because everything was covered in thick layers of spider web, and dust. The castle was magnificent from outside but the insides in no way suited a noble taste. It was not a dreadful place where seats the ultimate evil but rather an abandoned dungeon where some adventurers would search for treasures. However, we were clearly affected by this place. Veronica and Yuriko were trembling. Veronica was mumbling something incoherent, and Yuriko was trembling so much that it would be better to call it vibrating. The woman looked more like a construction worker with a jackhammer. We were wandering around for hours until we found a huge decorated door with magical patterns and fantasy creatures. After we opened the door, we saw a huge throne room, with a coffin in place of a throne. Four sisters no 51. Recently there was nothing for me to do. I already finished playing all of the recent games I bought on ice, and now I am out of options. I could have hanged out with my sisters but then I risk a certain death. Iowa will force me to study which is no no, Mo will no doubt fight me, and pain is no no, and if I hang out with Whiskey, then I will be killed within a few minutes, though the newest Union flag was worth it. While I was contemplating, I suddenly thought of contemplating much prettier thighs, and walked out for the first time this week. When I nonchalantly exited the dormitory, I was blinded by this damned natural light. I couldn't see where I am going, so I had to blind walk until I walked into something. Uh, Miss New Jersey. Or somebody. Hiya, pretty boy. Can you help big sis find pretty girls tilde? I am sorry. When my vision started returning, not only I heard but also I saw that I bumped into the crown prince. I grinned. After all I have such a nice opportunity tilde. M Miss New Jersey. W why are you smiling like this? The guy tried to step back but I hugged his arm and glued myself to him, so that he wouldn't escape. Can you help me Tilda? Pretty please Tilda? What can I do to help you? He immediately succumbed to my charm. I just need you to follow me Tilda. We walked to the restaurant's front yard. I placed the crown prince near the entrance. In a shade of a large oak. You just need to stand here and look attractive Tilda. Can you do it Tilda? I wonder what exactly I am doing this for? CP. Why? But of course to help my little sister. Did you know that Whiskey was feeling down as of late? And I am going to have you stay here. When she comes, you will go and talk to her. And this will cheer her up Tilda. Bulls Master Level 99. I quickly hid in the bushes nearby, and waited for the moths to fly to the light. Unsurprisingly, 
The handsome prince attracted a lot of attention. Usually he would try shaking off the crowd of infatuated teenager girls but now that I asked him to help me with my noble goal, taking pictures of thighs and panties, he has to stay and tolerate the girls, and because he is such a well-educated and polite guy, he has to keep talking to them. Click 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 I continued jamming more and more pantsashots into my phone's memory. The girls didn't even notice me lurking nearby and lifting their skirts for clear shots. Regrettably, the best bottoms were grouped deep in the crowd, and I didn't risk exposing myself, so I had to be content with the mediocre ones. All well that ends well, I thought, and disappeared in the bushes, but only after I used all of the memory I had. PSST, whiskey, come in, over. What the hell do you want? You disgusting. Wait, do you know whom I saw? The crown prince is by the restaurant, and is bravely fighting against a bunch of girls. How about you come and lend him a hand tilde? Just show up, and the girls will disappear the next moment. Wait, if you say so tilde. Now, where is my phone tilde? Fine, you jerk. I'll come. Don't you dare sneaking up on me. Of course. I lied when I said that I used all of the memory. There is enough disc space for one more shot tilde. Five minutes later Whiskey showed up, and immediately headed to the crowd of girls. Nobody paid attention to her fake coughs. K-H-E K-H-E. Only when my little sister shouted her coughs did the girls notice her fuming. I've got business to do with his highness. Care to scram? Facing a cutie pie. The noble girls had no choice but to be intimidated by her pouting. One girl was intimidated enough to back all the way into the bush where I was. Holy. The girl's skirt caught on a branch, revealing her white butt cheeks. Kyra? I poked her with a branch. After all, commandos are not interesting to me. It was at this moment I knew, if, you shameless. Of course. The girl's bottom just had to flash in Whiskey's view. He he he. Gee give me a sea chance to explain. Just die, you freak. Wh- Boom 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 v3 ch99. The legend's origin without making a single noise we lined up near the entrance, and waited. The sole inhabitant of this place did not wake up. I'll go wake up the sleepyhead. I carefully sneaked towards the coffin. Veronica sneaked after me. Without saying a word, the stone floor did not make any noises while we were sneaking, so that is a good thing already. When I decided to gesture for the rest to take good positions, I felt like somebody moved near the coffin. Whatever was there, it disappeared immediately after it was heard. With the road once again open, we proceeded with the preparations. Veronica and Eureka are going to be the main fighting force because of their powerful magic. Patricia. Yuri, and I are going to be a nuisance, getting in the way of the Demon King. When we were almost done, the coffin moved a bit, making us all hold breath. Grinding a heavy stone lid moved to the side, and a black hand appeared out of the coffin. WHO wakes me up. The Demon King roared. We were yet to finish the preparations, and the magic skills were yet to be casted. R, whatever. Bang 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 I fired at the coffin with a slight hope of wounding the sleepy demon king, you worm. Instead, I only irritated him. A huge muscular humanoid stood up, and picked a battle axe lying near the coffin. Veronica tried to stop him but before she could even approach, she was thrown into a wall. Could you be so kind to obediently die? Eureka tried attacking from behind and even managed to cut the demon. The drops of blood stopped midair, and flowed back into his body. Bang 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 even though my armor piercing shots were evaded, I successfully drew the demon king's attention to myself. UGH. The next moment, I was kicked into a wall, like a ball. Take this. Yuri and Patricia flanked the demon king and inflicted some minor wounds. The enraged monster couldn't hit the nimble girls before he was attacked by Veronica. Ping the rapier hit the battle axe, and slipped off, right towards the demon's chest. You little. DK, don't forget me, sugar tilde. 
I coughed blood when I heard Yuriko's sweet voice. The woman's attacks won enough time for Veronica to prepare. Grandmaster's prowess, the million blade. Eternal radiance. Before the Demon King could do anything, he was pierced from all sides at once. K H A U dot S T W H dot at U R. The Demon King's wounds were not healing. Facing the crazily overpowered girl, he had to break the contact and take defensive stance. Now it is our turn. Give her time to recast. Yuri rushed at the Demon King, and the rest of us followed. I got close the first. With a wide slash I cut off a couple of the demon's fingers. They grew back but they were still mangled. Patricia and Yuriko were poking the demon king from the sides, while I and Yuri were attacking from the front. Die. He tried to break out of our encirclement by rushing at Yuri. The axe almost cut her, when the demon king was thrown back by something. T this can't be. He said in terror. Grandmaster's prowess. The Million Blade. Veronica closed the distance with the Demon King in a flash. After she turned him into a sieve, they started exchanging blows at the speeds when neither of us could see anything but after images. Ha! Huh. It all ended when the girl was pushed a dozen meters back. Despite the fierce fight, neither of them took damage. She just needs to land another blow. He is weakened. Yuri summarized, as if I would let you. The Demon King rushed at us. UGH. I took the blow in the other's stead. The Divine Steel Katana successfully withstood the attack but I felt like my arms were broken. Huronami. Veronica tried drawing the Demon King's attention away from me. Use my powers. Yuri rushed to the fiery girl, and when she touched Veronica, Yuri disappeared. Grandmaster's prowess. The Million Blade. Eternal Radiance. Veronica's rapier glowed, and the girl disappeared in a flash. Before my brain could catch up with what happened, the Demon King spilled blood around himself. His head was pierced, and blood was flowing out of a hole in his heart. It was clear that he is going to die for sure. Instead of resignedly accepting such a fate, the mighty demon leapt at Veronica with his remaining strength and hit her with his axe. Veronica fell down like a puppet with cut strings, and Yuri was thrown out of her body, reappearing again. The Demon King was no longer moving. Just in case, when I approached I cut off his head. When it was finally safe, I started performing first aid to Veronica. Veronica's wound was deep. It would be a miracle if she survives. The hero played her part. I stood up and glared at Yuri. How about you try helping her instead? I can at most cauterize her wounds, but there is a way. Why, then what are we waiting for? Sorry for the inconvat hashtag n exclamation mark percent. Before she finished speaking, I started losing consciousness. Hash at dollar es and at v3ch100. One last thing I opened my eyes, and immediately started feeling shocked. First, the ship was moving without my orders. So was the squadron. Second, I was on the ship. Third, I was squeezed between Patricia and Veronica, and they were both awake. And they did not try to kill each other. Am I in heaven? You can say so. At least they would explain how that lunatic is still alive. P. I. Veronica tried saying something but immediately hid her face behind me. I tried standing up. You are not going anywhere. The girls dragged me down and rested their heads on my feeble chest. Uh, can I go? I need to make sure everything is all right. No sooner than you answer us. P, what do you think about us? V, it wouldn't hurt to clarify things, wouldn't it? The girls suddenly paled but I still had to make sure they will understand. I love you both, would I stay here if I didn't? A cheesy line to make them both calm down. Not that I lied about it. W well. While they both were all bashful about my words, I flew out of the cabin, like a shell out of railgun. On the ship appeared to be only four people, fewer than we sailed out with. The final crew member was nearby, in Yuriko's meditation chamber. When I peeked inside, I saw how the woman was relaxedly meditating. Where is Yuri? 
that baby, I don't care, ha finally, no longer I am oppressed tilde. Eureka immediately returned to meditation, I guess, you're happy now, how about you try to re-establish that cult of yours. I may try, I even know whose mother-in-law will help me tilde. I hissed at her shamelessness, and headed to the bridge. After a brief exchange of messages with Fairy I understood that Yuri set the ship on course, and then disappeared. She didn't even say goodbye. I had a couple of weeks to bond with my lovers, and the only thing that withheld the ceremony was the fact that we were in the middle of the ocean. Right after we returned to Benizio and docked, Patricia dragged me to Alba. Since we are too well known and too famous. The meeting with the new doge of Benizio happened as soon as we arrived. So, you returned? A pity that you brought that thing back. How about you tell me, have you found your fairy tale demon? Alba glanced at us from behind a thick stack of papers. We did find the demon king, and we even defeated him. Now we all be happy and prosperous. At least before the next one comes. Sarcastically answered Eureka. How is the situation with the West? Emmanuel seems to be weirdly absent. They all sailed out yesterday. They will return back, and then we all will try to live peacefully. They fear you. We fear them. Peace for our time. Alba put a file on the edge of the desk. That's great. Anything else? You would not hurry to visit me just because of that, would you? She stared at us from behind the stack, when Patricia glanced at me. Alba smiled. Can I ask you for your daughter's hands? I do not remember having daughters other than Patricia, so you don't need to ask me about that monster's hand. Still, I bless you. Just do remember to invite me. That is the first condition. Alba acquired a lot of things. All of them could be summed up as I will arrange everything for my dear daughters, so don't you dare leaving me out of this. Overall, the preparations took two months. In that time, I was basically forced to stay on the ship. Luckily, what Alba prepared for me was not a white dress with a veil. I got a tuxedo. In the church where the ceremony took place were hundreds of people. Most of them were rich and powerful but there were also some familiar faces. For example, the charged Affa of the West, Emmanuel, and the entire flock of you-know-who. I, and my wife us, stopped in front of an altar. The priest finished reading his scripture, and now was the last opportunity to return to my baccalaurean life. Signorina Kuro Nami, dear lord, what a name, will you accept Signorina Patricia di Benizio as your legal wife? Yes. Signorina Patricia, will you accept? Yes. Patricia interrupted the priest, before the poor soul could finish. Ah, Signora Patricia. Will you accept the radiant son of Benizio, Signorina Veronica di Benizio as your legal wife's partner? The girl gritted her teeth, and uttered, Yes. P, dear Lord, grant me strength. Signora Caronami, will you accept Signora Veronica as your legal wife? I felt glare on my back, it surely came from the loving mother. Yes. And finally, the priest was about to repeat the same phrase but Veronica's gaze made the poor soul swallow his words. Yes, 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 yes I sigh 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 sighs. Veronica started rubbing her cheek against mine. The ceremony was concluded safely. Though, I am sure Alba will be very sad. I settled down in the city. In one of the most luxurious mansions. I was eating and sleeping all day. I was even given a rank of admiral. I have loving wives, and many friends, but as the time went on, I started to feel this slight urge of searching for troubles, until one day I set sail to the west, without saying a word. On my way, in the middle of the abyss, I heard a voice. Are you in search of adventures, once again? Gee, yeah, I got a bit too tired of pampered lifestyle. Is there something you wanted? If you remember, I offered you a chance to try something else, if you wish for it, what do you think about it? You know all about this world but what if you try out something else? Something entirely new? The God's words creep their way into my heart, I guess I really seek for something different. Let's do this, but...
I must tell this to my friends and family. Of course, tell me when you are ready. Gee, now. I just need to finish one last thing. V4 polls, no one. Now is the time to start thinking about how the V4 will work. Of course, it will take some time for me to start writing it. After all, I plan to start V4 only after the V1 rewriting. The first important question is the way the Dush class sisters would interact. Currently I have three ideas for it. 1. The bond system. The MC will be either Orleans, or Brittany, without the ability to change the characters after the story starts. To make things more spicy, the other sister will not just be an obedient lamb but will listen to the MC as long as they share bond. Bond will affect how high is the chance that the other sister agrees not to pulverize a nearby town, should she feel like doing it too. The MC will be able to switch between the sisters at any time but to counter the sudden changes of behavior, I would have to make both sisters behave more or less the same. Also there is a question of whether I should make the uncontrolled sister a silly AI, like our beloved squadron from V3. Still, this way there will be a lot of opportunities to wreck my brain, and to complicate my life. 3. The so-called Four Sisters Way the MC will switch from one sister to another every n chapters. The previous question of how the uncontrolled sister should behave still stands but it may be possible to make the MC act like differently with each of them. After all, consistency gives more options as well as removes the chance of having only one of the sisters get all the love. This is the first of three four poles so stay tuned. Also, 4S chapters will continue to be released. The V1 rewrites will start appearing on my Patreon by the end of this week. ETA of their arrival on this site is unknown tilde. Epilogue 1. Another reincarnation? Okay, I am ready. One day I notified the god that I am ready to give it another try. Great, now close your eyes. I did as he ordered. I felt chilly and then lost my consciousness. What greeted me was that God, you did a good job kid to fight against a wolf with your. Before the God could finish, a palm covered his mouth. Enough is enough. A young man appeared from behind the God, as you command. The God bowed, and disappeared. I was left alone with an unknown man. Who are you? I stepped back. When the man stepped towards me, only then did I notice an abnormality with him. He had fox ears, and fox tail. I guess we would no longer need to play with you. The man's voice was weirdly feminine, and after they flicked their fingers, my head felt like it would explode from headache. UGH. All sorts of memories flooded in, or rather re-emerged. What happened? Where am I? I was shocked by the fact that I managed to reincarnate several times, all for naught. Does it even matter Tilda? The fox person smiled. It was not a gentle smile, or a mocking. It was a smile of a predator. The closer the fox approached me, the more scared I was. However, I started noticing fine details. It's you? The fox giggled and turned into a lily. Why did you make me reincarnate again and again? Was it not because you asked for it yourself? Again and again? The childlike kit soon pretended not to care, and sat in an armchair. F fine. Then why did you need to erase my memory? Just because. I felt deja vu. Not that it was unexpected. All right. Where is that god? Playing with you is bothersome. So now that spirit is no longer required. She was busy with looking at her nails. What do you mean by playing? Exactly what it would imply. I just love those gods and their darned answers. Oh, great Akagi-sama. Tell me, what is going on? Why am I here? Once again, you are making this Akagi-sama tired. A fool can be taught nothing, and looking at you fooling around is no longer entertaining. So now I am going to stop wasting my time for nothing. Eh, then what will happen to me? Nothing. For a moment I was dumbfounded. Absolutely nothing? Nothing that would matter to you afterwards. Eh, 
Can this majestic Akagi Sama clarify it to this foolish me? The Lalai smirked, and her answer made me petrified. This majestic Akagi Sama will consume your soul, and you will cease to exist. You outlived your usefulness to me. A. W. Wait. If I am no longer needed, then why not just let me go? Why would I? You signed the pact with me. Your soul belongs to Akagi Sama. I looked through my memories, and I can say for sure. She bulls me. You agreed to reincarnate on my conditions. A mortal's request, fulfilled by a god, is equal to a pact with said god. Akagi Sama can do whatever she wants with her possessions. A. Eh? I started thinking, thinking hard. Then, I must be not the only one. Well, well. There are many souls. All of them will continue to serve until I am tired of them, the latter is your case. Once again, my brain cogs started spinning hard, to process a way to save my bottom. Wait, she didn't kill me yet, does she want me to do something? Clap 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 then. You have one opportunity to make me reconsider, unlike the others, you were brought with no specific goal in mind, do try to make Akagi-sama give you a chance. I spent hours thinking. All sorts of options were considered, reconsidered, and re-reconsidered. The time was not of a concern. And since the fox goddess was just sleeping in the armchair, I had enough time to come up with an answer. Desperate times require the most desperate solutions. I, I will fight you. If I win, you will let me go. My shout made the sleeping Lily mumble something, and rub her eyes. M-H-M? Do try. Artilda Kagi Sharma fill high viewer shams. Artilda. Not that I would ever let you go Tilda. A. The Lilai took a flute out of nowhere, and after the first notes, I was enveloped in a light. In the light I started seeing the statistics panels of all ships I used. And a warning. You can use each ship only once. V4 poles. No two. The second poll is all about me thinking about what characters should be introduced in V4. On one hand, I am having a thought about reintroducing some characters from the previous volumes. On the other hand, the old characters may be considered less interesting, or outdated, in comparison with introduction of new characters. That is why I am planning to have a poll about some characters I consider to be usable in the V4. I am planning to limit the amount of side characters to 4, and that is the limit of choosable options of the poll. I will choose based on the amount of votes every character gets, not to mention, the MC will be getting some buffs, or debuffs, based on the characters chosen. 4 sisters no 52, as the exams approach. The students became less active, not in lazy way, they just barely come out of their rooms, and at most commute between their dormitories and the library. Seeing this situation, and fearing their respectable parents' rage, the principal created a special brainstorming team to solve this problem. As one could guess, when it is time for unconventional ideas, Iowa class is up for business. In total, eight people were locked in one small conference room with nothing but snacks, all until the decision is made. As you might know, the examination is approaching. Some of us know about it more than the others. The principal glanced at sleepless big sis, which is why we need to find a good way to help our students make it through this hard time, without hampering their studying capabilities but simultaneously letting them relax. Your ideas. With the principal's speech over, the team started thinking. Some of us, Iowa put a pillow on the table, and put her head on it. The freak stared in a portative console. Mo was fiddling with her LED staff. How about we host a joint studying session in the library? The crown prince was the first to speak. Then what? Studying gets replaced with studying? New Jersey grumbled from a corner but it will let the students help each other and communicate. CP, and impedes my working. Yeah, then how about the bunch of us will perform? The next stupid idea was delivered by Mo. Seriously? And who'd perform? Iowa and I are busy tutoring. The prince and the principal are also out of question. That jerk is too lazy to do anything. 
and what are you so happy about? TCH, Killjoy. Mo, perhaps we can dwell on the idea with joint activity. The platinum blonde drew the common attention. Then what about those who do not wish to participate? Everybody glanced at the certain someone. Then we just have to make sure everybody would love the idea. CP. I suggest we start with an intermediate voting. Shall we host a joint activity for the entire academy? PP. Yeah. Everybody raised their hands, and even Sleeping Big Sis mumbled something affirmative. I suggest. NJ, you, shut up. Come on, Whiskey, let her talk. Maybe she'd have a good idea. Mo, thanks, Tilda. We should have a girls' swimsuit competition. NJ, I have a counter suggestion. How about we have a public lynching of the freak? As long as I'm lynched by pretty girls. Nobody laughed at her joke. Any actual suggestions? PB. Barbecue was a successful event, so how about we just repeat it? This time the freak had an actually normal suggestion. Nah, I don't want to cook, and our staff cook is going to refuse to. Mo, incoherent mumbling. Yeah, just telegraph us. Mo, I am too tired to cook. Sorry but count me out. Yeah, K. Food is out of question. Music is too. Since we lack our drummer. Once again. A mumbling came out from the pillow. I was thinking about a tea party but... CP, does your highness mean that type of activity that is the least suitable for students right now? PP, indeed. However, what if we host a cricket tournament? CP, heck no. Nobody would want this kind of stuff. Not to mention, the academy lacks any facilities for it. The principal refused to... W what about? Suddenly, an unknown sound came from the platinum blonde's direction. All heads turned there, and we finally noticed the blue-haired girl squeaking up her mind. Everything is all right, continue. At the platinum blonde's encouragement, the girl continued. W what if we do try a sports-related activity? B H, nay, too much of a pain. N J, rather. Nobody would care. Everybody is sick and tired of sports at this point. All that we do here is too boring. Mo, exactly. But what if, uh? The blue-haired girl leaned closer to her patron, and whispered something. The platinum blonde clapped, and proclaimed in agitation. You, commoners, since your ideas are out of ordinary, then you may know good sports that can draw attention of our not-versed audience. Tell us. What is the greatest sport you know of? PB, baseball. The four of us said in unison. Then New Jersey explained the rules in short. Five minutes later, we surrender. What an alien idea is this? PB, come on. That's the best way of spending time. Outdoor team activity for an entire nation. We continued pushing forward the best sport humankind has invented. Incoherent mumbling. Everyone stopped arguing, and glanced at Iowa. What's up? Mo put her ear closer to Big Sis' mouth. Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh, you're sure? Okay. They stopped consulting, and finally Mo exclaimed, Soccer. Mo, with this, an entire hour of suffering was ended. Soccer tournament it shall be. Epilogue 2. A dauntless little kitsune I swiftly tapped on the aircraft carrier. And then the light faded. I found myself somewhere in the crazy cartoon world of hers. The feelings of fox ears and tails I grew used to returned. As well as the awkwardness of handling the Najnata. Akagi Sama was ten meters away from me. The lil I had nothing in her hands, aside from her flute. I took a stance, and prepared. As foolish, as ever, you are yet to deserve fighting this indomitable Akagi Sama. Yuri. She called out to her side, and through suddenly appeared Dori I Gates walked Yuri, Anisama. The fox girl looked questioningly at Akagi Sama. Fight this idiot. At least it should appear to be fun. She turned around, and headed to a pedestal with a bunch of pillows there. However, Akagi Sama suddenly looked back. Coming to think of it, it would be a shame if you were to get hurt. 
Thula like Kitsune took a bamboo sword out of nowhere. Then she threw it to me. That is much better. With a sense of accomplishment, she returned to walking. W wait a moment. Why am I the only one getting a bamboo sword? I saw how Yuri prepared the Najnata, and was clearly about to chop me for a stew. Akagi Sama dived into a pile of pillows. And when she finally settled in a pose, she answered, It would be bad if my cute little sister was to be hurt. You, on the other hand, she gave a signal to Yuri, and when the girl nodded, the goddess started playing a melody. Few with the first notes, Yuri charged at me, and almost cut me in half. The fox girl's attack couldn't connect, for now. Hence, the legal ally didn't even open her eyes to look at us. Ha ha. I tried hitting Yuri with the bamboo sword but, well, at least I was not tripping. Wait a moment. I've got armor, don't I? Ping I stopped the Najanata's blade with my arm, and when Yuri's pace was screwed, I counterattacked. Ugh. I hit the girl in her belly, and finally earned a squint of Akagi-sama's eye. Ha. Yuri became agitated, and started relentlessly attacking. The thrusts of her Najinata were becoming faster and faster. My evasion, on the other hand, was a problem. I barely managed to increase the distance between us, before Yuri's thrusts turned into a jackhammer attacks. I could clearly tell that I lost some HP, despite my armor. How about we talk this through? Pink talk less. Why, Yuri was not letting me approach her. She kept me at distance so that I would have no chances of approaching too close, where the Najinata couldn't hit me. Seriously? This isn't fair, you know? Is there anything fair in fighting? The Lalai Kitsune only nodded. Come on. The rules are. Ping 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 let me finish at least. Smash the blade pierce my shoulder. Damn it. T. I leapt back as far. As I could. I was losing any advantage I could have. Rested? Let's continue. Yuri charged at me, and with every attack she was pushing me further into an imaginary corner. The entire battlefield was a huge stone plate, in the middle of a flattened mountain peak. The only corner it would have is the end of the ground. Still, I had no plans of falling down. Not when my life is at stake. Sorry, my turn. When Yuri somehow slowed down because of the Najinata's pole interfering with her moves. I managed to evade her attack, and push forward. I scored a hit on the girl's shoulder, and we have a winner. I exclaimed, as the bamboo sword landed on top of Yuri's head. Kaya? The fox girl looked at me with contempt, and patted the bump on her head. After I landed a good hit, Akagi-sama stopped playing her melody, and started playing something else. With the first notes of the melody, I saw something obnoxious. A warrior climbed out through a rift in the stone surface. The warrior was wearing a golden samurai armor, and his face was covered by a menpo facial armor. He immediately drew a katana, and charged at me. V4 poles, no three. I was having three poles in mind but then I forgot what the third was supposed to be. Though there are still questions for which I would want to see the opinion of our little community of ten active voters. Sometimes the readers ask where the hell is my ship, where the hell is my ship girl, where the hell is my naval action. And that is why I would want to know the opinion about the amount of water you would want to see in the V4. Not that I will absolutely abide. There are three main ways I would want to do this. Mostly ground. Mostly sea and something in between. 1. As one can guess, fantasy is about events going on the ground, where some action can happen in the sea. That does somewhat remind me of V2, where Delight barely embarked on sea missions, and spent a lot of time on the ground. The main focus of the events is on the solid ground, and only some things would happen in the sea, or a coastal zone. 2. Then there is an intermediary way. Some events happen on the ground, and some are tightly related to coastal and maritime activity. V1 is somewhat close to this, though I doubt many would see a lot of difference between battleships pulverizing fortresses from sea, and from land. 3. And finally, 
The events are occurring in C. V3 is almost completely on the water, and some may even think it is great. For a destroyer, or a carrier, the sea is essential, since they rely on torpedoes. For battleships it may be a questionable move, not to mention some redundant mechanics tied to the sea activity. Still, it is an option. V4 poles, no 4, I guess it's the final pole about V4. This time around I am asking about which of the Dutch class sisters the MC will be. Instead of describing how the MC will act as each sister, we all know that the MC barely changes. I will in short describe how either of the sisters would behave. Dutch Orleans is zealous and sometimes her focus wanders off where it shouldn't. She is going to be very proactive in searching for trouble, and keeping her in check is nigh impossible. When things concern Faith, she will be absolutely relentless. However, she is much more moderate than her little sister. Dash de Brittany is less of a zealot, and more of a musclehead. When she sets her sight on something, she will keep on pursuing it, until she succeeds, or decides that it is no longer important. She is very stubborn but quite obedient to her big sister. Brittany is prone to extreme solutions but usually leaves major decisions to her wiser sister. Overall, she would be a great ship girl to have, if only she was not actively searching for trouble. Announcement I am very busy with the IRL work, so I am sorry to announce that but at least for this week there will be no new chapters. Quite possibly I won't be able to free my schedule enough even the next week. V4 consultation poll My graduation work was somewhat accepted as fine for now, so I will write a chapter tomorrow. For now, I finally read the results of poll no 2, and found out that the most desired characters are, Alina, Lily, Akagi Chama, and a new character. But there are also somewhat many votes for Kasumi. Which is why this poll. I am considering to include her in the characters list. 1. If she is to be returned, then there will be more of everyone's favorite girls. Every word past the comma is with a question mark, but it will also make me disperse the efforts in the characters. One may remember that it is hard to handle many characters, and I am sure I already bunched a lot of them. 2. There is also an option of making her a secondary character. A character who just is there, and occasionally reminds of herself for the sake of plot or fan service. 3. Or just not include her at all. There are many characters by now, and with certain BB sister it will be even more pain. Epilogue 3. The cornered mice always resist tap 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 I desperately tapped on another ship, cause this guy is clearly not going to let me live. Unlike the young Kitsune. This one is a huge chunk of meat and bones, also referred to as warrior. Ping a split second before I was cut in two, a long sword appeared in my hands, and I managed to block the katana. For several seconds we stood against each other with our swords clashed. That was long enough to notice that I am not fighting someone human. The samurai's glowing red eyes were looking at me with deep hatred. I subconsciously felt that I need to step away before the samurai overpowers me. I jumped away far enough so as not to let him attack me immediately. Hey, why would you charge at me so suddenly? My voice was weird, low and domineering, suitable for a female warrior. The samurai responded nothing. Pierce he charged at me with the tip of the blade aimed at my throat. I barely shielded myself with the shoulder. Why the hell? I shouted and tried to return the favor by piercing him too. The samurai pulled the katana out of the wound, and rapidly turned around, to gain momentum for slashing me. Ping I parried him, and counterattacked, while the katana was not in my way. Slash I severed his arm, and made him fall back. While I was catching breath for a new fight, I noticed that Akagi-sama was finally paying some attention to my moves. Well, either way, I should ask. She may even answer, come on, I already wounded you, just surrender and that would be it. I shouted at the samurai. The lily Kitsune glanced at me, and at the samurai, without a glint of interest. Still, she gave the answer, he is the champion, 
he chose a chance to free himself from servitude. Either he fights and survives, or he dies and perishes. There are fates worse than death. One of such awaits him. When she was done answering, she continued playing the flute. Suddenly, the champion grew agitated. Perhaps after being reminded of the imminent doom, he charged at me again, as if losing his arm was nothing. Pink contrary to my expectations, he only became faster. I too started fighting for my life, because I noticed that the Lily started to get bored. Damn you. Am I a clown to you? He 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 I felt like I heard a chuckle somewhere. Ping I continued exchanging blows with the samurai, all to no avail. There was barely any gap in skill to be abused. Clang after another heavy exchange. We both stepped back from each other. We started waiting either for the other to make a mistake, or just to catch a breath. I was the first to move again, because I felt a chill on my back, the part which was visible only to the certain someone. The melody changed from a Japanese-style tune, to something more suitable for a Japanese action film. Clang I blocked the champion's katana, and kicked him between his legs. Previously we were only fighting with our swords, now I brought another dimension to our fight. Earning me both the champion's glare of contempt, and a fleeting chuckle of the flute. Really, now? After my successful attack I continued pushing forward. Slash I tried to cut off his leg but the champion managed to avoid the slash, at the cost of losing his balance. Pierce I pierced his chest, and pushed on the sword with my entire body. While I was defenseless, the champion managed to kick me, and pull the sword out. He was bleeding profusely but still stood up. Once again, the music changed, now to something suitable for a morning. I guess she gave up on you. I prepared for a fist fight. The champion lightly shook his head, as if saying she gave up on us long before this. He picked up his katana, and took stance. Instead of charging at me, he waited. Waited for a death suitable for a warrior. I shall not hold back. I approached and picked up the sword. Grumble the samurai grumbled something incomprehensible and we clashed for the last time. After we exchanged blows, I noticed that for a split second his eyes lost their glow. I went for the kill. Slash I cut the samurai's side. The champion fell on his knees, and grumbled something. Then his body fell down. It was my honor. I sheathed his katana, and put it closer to his body. Four sisters no fifty-three. Not everybody is suitable for sports and not everybody wants to run around with a ball. For this reason, there will be only one match, and only two teams. After the soccer match was announced, there were lots of candidates, so gathering two teams of nine people was a piece of cake. Gathering enough ingredients for lemonade to put big sis skills to use was not a problem either. When all of the preparations were done, we faced the most important issue. Both teams were gathered for the final discussion. All right boys and girls, listen up, since none of you, milk drinkers, knows how to play soccer, we'll be playing with you two of us per team. So, I will join the team whose girls let me take their pants such oats faster than the other team. With New Jersey's declaration of war, the team stood against each other, and prepared for a fight. The standoff proceeded silently for a few minutes, until a boy from the red team exclaimed, Miss Missouri will be with us. And then the hell was unleashed. No, we invited her earlier. The blue team counterattacked. It does not count. It was before we teamed up. Before things start to get ugly, I hurried to stand in between. Ha 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 Tilda. There is more than enough me for everyone Tilda. Don't fight. W well, it does make sense. I was relieved that, then Miss Iowa will be with us, never mind. Hey, we heard her saying she will join us. Once again, the situation spiraled out of control. TCH, you guys, we ain't your stuff. Everybody turned their heads at Whiskey. Oh my, was Miss Wisconsin here too? Somehow, her presence was shadowed by the rest of us. You, hey, let me go. Before the overagitated girl could go and beat the students, she was gripped by Big Sis. Let me go and kick them. 
I hurried to assist with dragging Whiskey away. Then I dragged away Angie, who was trying her best to do her shady stuff. We bunched up in shade of a tree. Whiskey pushed her head into Big Sis' chest, and cuddled. They are so mean. We That's right. How could they ignore you? You are such a nice girl. If only you knew how to keep your tongue in check. Yeah, I heard you. We and clearly you are a great player. Yeah. We and you clearly have a nice. NJ, bang in a flash, New Jersey was left with only the part of the phone that was held in her hand. You meanie. NJ, that's what you get for trying to take a photo of one's underwear. Whatever. At least the memory is still intact. She pulled her SD card out of the remnants of her toy. Oh fire, come to my aid and. Bum just why? With a precise shot, I removed the last trace of the crime. While Iwa was forced to calm down two children, I saw somebody approaching. What's up? It was the crown prince. Good day to you. We have finished discussing. Would either of you like to express your opinion, if you have any preferences on what team you wish to join? CP, nah, we don't actually care. Hee <laughs> hee, I should have expected this outcome. Miss New Jersey and Miss Wisconsin are invited into the red team, and you and Miss Iowa are invited into the blue team. When her name was mentioned, Angie pricked up her ears, only to be devastated by the outcome. The red team has only two girls. Great. Let's do our best tomorrow. I will be waiting. The crown prince headed back. Would you need help? I glanced at Iowa. Please no, please no, please no. NJ, why is this world so unjust? Why me of all people? We Iowa, on whose chest were weeping two sisters? just showed me an okay gesture, and proceeded with patting their heads. Epilogue 4. Do not cross the line The sound of flute stopped when the champion finally died. I glanced at the Lilikit soon, and she glanced back. Was that good enough? Maybe. She melancholically glanced at the body, and though for some time, soon she decided to do something with the flute. A short tune turned the dead body into ashes, and only then did she finally show interest in me. You proved yourself to be quite capable. Eh, then? Can I go home now? She remained silent. Only after I started waving at her to attract her attention, she started talking again. Maybe Ikagi-sama can spare a bit of her time for you. The Lali said with no interest. Then she looked at Yuri, who was done applying ice to the bump. What do you think? A, eh? aside from the obvious? Akagi-sama nodded. He surpassed my expectations. Not that they were high in the first place. Why? It is settled then. Akagi-sama took a fan out of her dress. What's that? This? She showed the fan. It is my fan. I facepamed. Then I swung the fan, and suddenly, the rock platform was cut across this line, and then we will talk. I looked at the cut. There was nothing extraordinary about it, aside from the fact that the paper fan cut the stone platform, without even remotely touching it. Just a couple of meters, and I will cross it. Now, where the hell is the trick? Bah. Whatever. I took a step, and, tap, nothing happened. A step, tap, nothing. Again? The Lilai Kitsune was grinning, as I cautiously took step after step. Tap I just need to make one more step, and this talk will be finished. But there just has to be some sort of a trick. She's grinning even more now, or maybe it is just me being a paranoid? Uh, Yuri-san, did she place a trap here? I did the least obvious thing. I asked for help. While Akagi-sama was holding back the laughter, Yuri fidgeted in doubt. You never know if a fox tells lies, because when fox tells something, she can cover it up as either truth or lie. You can never tell what Akagi-sama is thinking. Can you Tilda? After her sister's reassurance, Yuri finally answered. There is nothing. Why, the fox girl answered with such a straight face, that I couldn't tell for sure if she was serious, or not. I cautiously lifted a leg, but I hesitated to cross the line. It really is interesting to look at him. Why, when the time comes. 
Just take a bunch of pets, and enjoy observing them. A. What if they are as stupid as this one? Why, beating is just a way to show your affection Tilda. A. Ha ha ha. How funny. Finally, I gathered the strength to make a step, and boom a millimeter away from the line. I was suddenly pressed into the ground. The gravity around me increased so much, that I couldn't even lift a finger. And it happened to do so in such a way, that the line was not crossed. Ha 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 ha. While the kids soon were dying of laughter, I was struggling not to be crushed to death. How funny, as I said. Having pets can be funny. A. Eh? And if I get tired of them? Why? Until you get your seventh tail, keep them. Afterwards, do whatever crosses your mind. A. Eh? Hey. Majestic. And whatever. Akagi-sama, can you please release me? Sure Tilda. She lifted the spell, and I could breathe at last. Seeing that they were distracted for a bit, I rushed at the line. You when I almost crossed the line, I found myself being at where I started when the task was given. Seriously? After a couple more attempts I understood that she just looped this damned line to teleport me back to the start. You are such a bee. He 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 tilde. The lily feigned rejoice, but her eyes were not laughing. Since I am getting tired of seeing you run like a hamster. She swung the fan, and the line disappeared, as if the platform was never cut. Akagi-sama played a short melody, and then said, I will go have a dinner. Yuri, watch this idiot for me. With this done, she disappeared in a tori gate. I glanced at Yuri. The fox girl was not bothered in any way, she was strolling around the platform, and picking pink paper flowers off cartoon-like bushes, and what now? Rattle when I understood that I was too presumptuous, it was too late. Through a dozen of rifts, a dozen of samurai in red Alma climbed out on the platform. He h hey, Yuri. W. When will your sister return? I gripped the sword in hurry. If she went to mother's for a dinner, then, unless she goes to sleep afterwards, she should return within ten hours. Why, and what if she sleeps? Then within a decade. Why, I, am, so, dead. Epilogue 5 Fighting the mobs before the samurai could encircle me, I started with encircling myself. I rushed at one of them, and cut through his armor, before he could retaliate. I stepped away because of the severe injury I did. The samurai died. They are not that tough, ha? Huh? Immediately, the dead one's body disintegrated into ashes. I turned around to face the enemies I left to my back. There were ill. Oh, damn. A rift opened in between the crowd of the warriors, and one more climbed out. Now there were once again twelve of them. Oh boy. If only I knew how to keep my mouth shut. I cautiously backed away from them, to avoid letting the entire bunch overwhelm me. When one of the samurai ended up two ahead of the rest, I counterattacked. Swoosh ping I hit the chest plate, and the armor protected from my sword. Before I could step away, the samurai swung his katana, and ping I blocked in time but. Are you serious? The long sword was cut in two and I was not cut only because I was out of reach. Yuri, don't tell me it's as you wish. The fox girl shrugged her shoulders, and returned to idling. Never mind, tell me, is it that steel? Yes, it is the divine steel. With the girl's confirmation, I understood. I am so dead, now that I was left with a dagger, and a half of the sword. The samurai stopped being shy, and rushed at me all at once. The standoff of one against a dozen turned into running away of one against a dozen. There were two problems, I am so slow that I also have to dodge the enemy attacks while running, and Yuri doesn't try helping me at all. She stopped gazing around, and was looking how I am running away like a chicken. Just where on earth is this fair? Did an Isama not give you a proper sword? Yuri asked innocently. For a while I wondered if I should strangle the fox girl for not telling me that, or I should thank her for at least mentioning that. I hurriedly found the screen where I changed ships, and there was only one icon, a sword. Ping I summoned the sword just in time. 
This time the sword was not cut in two, and blocked a katana. Now we will play Tilda. And they charged at me together. My mouth will kill me faster than their swords. I was successfully blocking and parrying the attacks but no matter how skilled I am now, I am still one battleship foo against twelve enemies. And then it, a thought, hit me. All dots connected, and I understood that I am truly a clown for the kitsune. Eat this. You mother of. Bang 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 I fired my casemate guns, effectively evaporating the enemies. Although they immediately started climbing out of rifts. If I can keep killing them before they, reload is just 20 seconds. I don't even want to know for how long will the main guns reload, while my containment method is still reloading, one could brew some coffee, read a newspaper, or rush at me with swords at ready. Ping why don't you just stay dead? Several seconds later I opened fire again. Bang 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 I was killing more with the shockwave of 152mm guns than with the shells. Still, I was more than happy that I just needed to shoot when ready. While I was exulting, my sixth sense told me that I better turn around. Ping I barely blocked the attack, and noticed that the rifts opened behind me. For God's sake, can't you be nice to me? I continued providing entertainment for my only spectator, and trying not to be stabbed with sharp metal things that cut steel like paper. Many attempts later, I managed to find a tactic that allowed me to survive. After firing, I would run away as far as I could, and try to keep the samurai far enough to let me reload. Good job, me Tilda. I mentally gave myself a pat, and prepared. Bang 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 as I broke into a grin, I waited for the next wave. The wave showed up soon. This time, however, there were not a dozen of them but at least a hundred. I. Just why did I have to call it upon myself, four sisters no 54 announcement this week there may be no new chapters released. I'm sorry. I once again have to do a lot of work. Today the stakes and the tensions were high as ever. Today is the soccer match. And everybody has agreed that playing for fun is not good enough. Today's prize is participation in a circumnavigation we plan to have after the semester is over. Not only that. The losers will also have to let New Jersey under their girls' skirts. It is a ruthless and brutal punishment but it will motivate everybody to fight until their last breath. Also, for those who get tired there will be a food court with fresh lemonade. It was worth spending the entire morning. As the beginning of the match approached, everybody prepared for the play. Start. The referee blew his whistle, and threw us the ball. Geronimo. Before we processed what happened, Whiskey seized the ball, and rushed past us. Sorry. I tackled the ball, and passed it to Mo. She rushed towards the Reds goal, and was about to kick, when she was blocked by a couple of students. Passing. She side kicked the ball, and it ended up received by one of Blue students. The student continued approaching the goal, and when Mo was freed from the block, the student passed the ball. Hatsa. Mo, ping the ball hit a crossbar, and flew away. A red student received it, and tried to pass to somebody. I love those little inexperienced chicks Tilda. Mo intercepted the hapless student, and rushed back. By that time the reds realized who is the actual threat. Somebody with three balls is far more dangerous. She tried the same combo with passing. And this time, again, the students were fooled. It all would have failed if I couldn't keep New Jersey and Whiskey at bay, or rather, they kept me away. I could only helplessly look how Mo approached the goal. Kick. Ping. Oh, Mo. Just spend some time aiming. Will you? Those two are here. She continued trying to score a goal. But every time the crossbars were proving to be times better than the goalkeeper. By that time, New Jersey slipped away to do her dirty deed. This time there will be no salvation. Mo slipped past the defenders, and thanks. The second the ball left the contact with their foot, New Jersey slide tackled the ball away. You, come back. Two aces started playing against each other. Mo was about to tackle the ball back, when New Jersey did a bicycle kick, passing the ball to Whiskey. 
I was the closest one, so I hurried to intercept. Seriously? Then I turned around and ran towards the red side. Mo. Kick Mo and Ng once again started fighting for the ball. I may have tried to flip my skirt to distract Ng but it wouldn't help. Whenever her status as the strongest is challenged, she will be merciless. For God's sake, Ng, get the heck away from me. Mo, nay, 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 and nay. Nj, Mo slid below New Jersey, and tried to get closer to the goal. Hatsa. Mo, with a whistle, the ball flew towards the goal, and flew past the goalkeeper. Get this, you jacker. Mo showed her bottom to New Jersey, and started slapping herself, once again making me wonder what wrong deeds have I committed to of such sisters. K. While Mo was fooling around, New Jersey received the ball, and kicked it, right from the spot. Kick, what the F? Yeah, with Mo, New Jersey kicked the ball across the entire pitch, and hell knows how, scored a goal. See this? You have to respect your seniors. She clapped, and ran towards the Blues half. The game continued. Two players and 20 decorations continued pretending that something is going on. When the game approached its ending, the score was 4-3, with us leading. All goals were scored by either Mo, or Angie. Whiskey and I were just decorations for them. Once again, Mo and Angie clashed by the Reds' goal, and tried to get the ball. When an opening showed up, Mo kicked. The ball landed behind the goal line scoring us the final goal game is over score is five to three the referee blew his whistle and the game was concluded with us winning while i was running towards mo to congratulate her i saw a bizarre scene new jersey hugged mo from behind and did very obscene actions though it didn't look like mo noticed it while she was reveling in her victory Four sisters no 55 announcement since I somehow managed to finish the major assignments faster than expected here is a side story I simply had no time for writing anything bigger and more complex a week ago I accidentally walked into a girl the poor girl was weeping and crying alone far away from the usual migration routes since I use these far away roads often I was given mercy by the God an entire girl, all alone, and all to myself. Hey Tilda, what's up Tilda? The girl turned her head at me, and looked at me with her tear-filled eyes. He, he abandoned me. And the dam was breached. What happened next was just a bunch of comforting words, a warm hug, and berating the girl's former fiancé. There was nothing much at all. Well, I may have then said a cheesy line from an eroge, something like, he may have abandoned you, but the life is not over. Stay cheerful, and boys will line up for you. Just like I did Tilda, who could have thought that the girl will really find herself a soulmate, and they will become the most sensual love doves of the academy. Like, seriously? Come on, girls, one at a time. I tried to organize the line of girls who came to get a counseling. Ever since the girls found out that I counseled the lovey dovey couple, they started harassing me for a love advice for themselves. I didn't even need to search for them, or crawl around in bushes to get closer. They were really just crowding around me, like wildcats crowd around DJ and Carrier. For some time I was dumbing around, and honestly trying to sort this mess out. Then I finally understood that one's trouble, is another one's opportunity. I flipped my trouble into opportunity and got myself a paid service, divination on pantsushots. To make matters creepier weirder, my divinations were actually working. The supply of desperate souls was only increasing, up to the point when I found myself setting up a provisionary divination booth. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Another happy girl bowed a couple of times, and flew out of the tent to try out my advices. Next. While I was wondering how in the world I managed to have new panties show up constantly, yet another girl entered. W8? It is you? It was a very loud girl, who also happened to be close to the magnet for girls, Crown Prince. What's up? I looked at the Crown Prince's fiancé. The girl gave me a wry smile, and sat down. 
My husband spends less and less time with me. CPF, problem understood, the divination requires. Let us get this over with. She glared at me, but still lifted her skirt click after I savored the white innocence. I came up with an answer. Maybe you need to ask Kaiwa what they usually study together. And then choose the subjects you are least knowledge of Berlin. And how would that even? CPF, patience, young Padawan. Then you need to accidentally walk into him, and while you two talk, you need to mention that you have troubles studying. If he has head on his shoulders, he will invite you to study together. And if he is my husband? CPF. He is a bit dense. Artilda. In this case, honey Tilda. Can you please help me study Tilda? I could only understand when you teach me Tilda. The girl blushed, and turned crimson a bit later. You get it Tilda? As long as you are cute, innocent damsel in distress, he will be at your feet. W well, th 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 I will try, then we will talk. The girl stomped out of the tent. Next. At the end of another fruitful day. I started looking through my catch, there were all colors, from white to black, and everything in between, I specifically put the ones with ribbons and frills into a separate folder, he <laughs> bang hello there Tilda, as I turned around, I saw my worst nightmare, approaching me with the Bible in her hands. That day in New Jersey's weeping was heard throughout the academy. All traces of immodest activity were deleted, and the concerned girls were assured that their fillet is not going to be seen by anyone. The phone that participated in the incident was later used as a target for an accuracy contest for the main guns. Guess which hoodie-wearing battleship won the contest? Epilogue 6. Run, Forest, run. My finger found a button to call for another ship faster than a sprinter runs towards a free meal. What the hell am I even thinking about? I wondered, while my body was changing into a fast and furious cat girl. Armor matters not, while speed and evasion do. Let's rock. I rushed at the spawning evil, and started slashing left and right. The divine steel katana was chopping red armor-like paper and I started rapidly clearing the horde of samurai, the only issue was that they spawn faster than I kill them. Ping I barely blocked a katana slash, and then I saw that I am surrounded from all sides, brilliant, rushing into the middle of deadly samurai. That's a great plan, me, that's freaking ingenious, if I understand it correctly, tactical retreat. I tried to use my evasion to haul my bottom out of here. Not that it worked. When I somehow managed to free myself some space, I started thinking on what to do. Until I saw a flashing button at the edge of my view. Call for support when I clicked on it. I saw two options, bombing run, and barrage. Why not both? What's up, mother hackers? Are you ready to die again Tilda? I grinned. As their death approached. And where is it? While the death's approach was weirdly slow. The samurai appeared to be ridiculing me, and after they were done laughing their lungs out through the masks, they charged at me. Boom 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 then everything started exploding, as shells landed round. Well, better late than never. I prepared for the next round of fighting, when more shells fell. Boom 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 through the smoke and craters I rushed at the enemies, as steel continued clashing. I found myself once again deep inside of a horde of warriors. That was expected. I kill them, they resurrect, and do so around me. I would be constantly surrounded from all sides, as long as I keep fighting. Yuri, how about we play together? I waved in the direction the fox girl was the last time I saw her. No response came. Pink pew slash after I somewhat grew used to the new pace of the combat. I started cutting through the samurai at much better rate. If there were only 12 of them, I would be able to get rid of them immediately after they return. However, I am one against many. Ping Hei, have some honor, will you? No stabbing in the back, said I, as I parried an attack, and stabbed someone in the back. While I was trimming the red grass around me, the radar went crazy. 
The entire radar screen was covered in contacts. Then I looked up, swoosh swoosh in between dodging the enemy's swings. I was looking at the sky. A swarm of aircraft dived from the clouds. What a majestic scene it would be, if the clouds were not looking like they were made for a grade school's my first theater staging. What in the first second I thought, great, I now have some help. In the second second I thought, they are targeting the enemies, right? And finally, when I understood that something is about to go terribly wrong, do they just drop everything on our heads? By that time, I could already hear the whistling of falling ordnance, overwhelmed only by the sound of my heartbeat. Every man for himself. I rushed away from the crowd of samurai, and tried to get as far away as I could. Boom 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 When I recovered, I found myself lying on Yuri's lap. Oh, hi. It was a good idea to hide before you called everything on yourself. A pity I missed the scene, and you running like a chicken. I smiled wryly. The fox girl swiftly removed the soft thighs from under my head, and waved to the patiently waiting tide of red. Then, I started running. Run, cat, run. Yuri was cheerfully clapping, as I ran for my life. Epilogue 7 Master and his fool unknown amount of time later. Ping I parried another strike. I already lost count of how many of them I had taken down with guns, support, and the katana. Just when I was about to start running again, I saw how Yuri signed the warriors to stop. All of them stopped in place, they froze like statues, even though the fierce fight was still in progress. Yuri nimbly passed through the crowd and when she had no space to squeeze through, she jumped up and walked on their heads. Finally, the fox girl stopped in front of me with a flower wreath. I finished it Tilda. She smiled, and put it on my head. Don't lose it Tilda. Once again she smiled, though I suddenly felt like all of the samurai focused on the top of my head. Then she retreated. When I prepared for the next round of fighting, I heard a call from behind of the crowd go for the wreath. Why, seriously? Ping 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 swoosh the samurai didn't even bother attacking anything but the top of my head. You oo you oo vixie in. I started running away from the ruthless murder machines, accompanied by the fox girl's laughter. Just you wait. I, I, I will stop amusing you. That's it. It was at that moment I knew. I tripped. I rolled head over heels and suddenly I felt like I am in a very bad situation. Two hundred red glowing eyes were gazing at the top of my head, surely not with the purpose of petting my cat ears, as I prepared for the inevitable. They charged. Yuri was still laughing out loud, as she looked at me about to die. Damned vixen, stop. The katanas stopped right in front of my face. Were you going to say something about my kin? As my head robotically turned around. I saw the wonderful, majestic, and very, very, very generous and forgiving Akagi-sama. The Lilai Kitsune smiled gently, and waved to the warriors. They bowed, and sunk into the ground. The next few minutes I spent kowtowing, and singing praises. He he he, and now, how about we just... Indeed. This Akagi-sama thinks it would be worth letting you try standing up to her. She smiled an angel, devil, and put her palms together. I immediately took a stance, and a fool is always a fool. She sighed, and picked up her fan. As I watched out for her moves, I prepared to strike. What an idiot. She swung the fan, and I felt like I don't feel my lower half. As my brain tried to process what happened, I saw how Akagi-sama leaned over me and looked how I was dying in a pool of blood. This is but a reminder. Throw away your stupid thoughts about fighting me. You are but a toy, and unless your master wills it, you will quietly wait for orders. Her voice sounded like she was really in a bad mood. I tried speaking, but aside from blowing some blood, and releasing air, I couldn't do anything. Why? Did I ever say to prepare to fight me? This distinct Akagi-sama said that she will let you stand up to her, not that you are to take a stance and fight. Eh, hey, enough about that. 
she put the flute to her mouth, and played a short melody, miraculously, I was revived, after another few minutes of kowtowing and singing praises, I sat in C. Isa, and waited for her orders, wow, I became such an obedient slave, be glad, few of my toys get an honor of having an illusion of choice, Akagi Sama glanced at me, and returned to her pillow pedestal, then, the first thing I want you to do is, she swung the fan, to cross this little peculiar line, I gasped, as both foxes prepared to look at the clownery, I picked up the katana, I approached the line, very carefully, I used the katana to check if I could trigger the traps with it, <laughs> nothing, for now, Yuri, are there any traps? The fox girl grinned, and after a short exchange of glances between the sisters, she answered, I wonder if you will be surprised by what lies beyond Tilda? Both kids soon started snickering, once again making me feel like I am about to do a very stupid thing. Step step step, Jay just, it shouldn't be that bad, right? Come on, I can do it, I can. ISS surely seek can, step. Yeah, I, I will just be a clown for them, that's nothing. I already made a fool of myself so many times, step and nothing happened. I just stepped over the line, while the two foxes were trying hard to suppress their laughing. I fell on my knees and sighed out in relief. I crossed the line, and nothing happened. So, what now? Now? Now we will have fun Tilda. The Lilai Kitsune turned into an androgynous tall Kitsune, and drew a very long katana, the Odaki. Four sisters know 56. The countdown has begun. It was seven days until the exams, I was the only one who escaped the hell and survived. Despite all of our struggle, the devil in disguise has captured my sisters. Miss Wisconsin, are you sure we should not ask for Miss Iowa's help? The blue-haired girl looked at a mess of writing that I wrote for today's tuition, you bet you wouldn't want to. I remembered the horrors I witnessed, how skinny pale hands creeped towards me and hoarse voice called for me, study with us, study with us, study with us. No matter how heartfully Mo bathed on her knees, the creeping darkness took her away, and the traces the freak's fingers left, as she was dragged into the library. Just thinking about that made me shiver. I don't want to approach Iowa for the entirety of the next week. If not for me being your tutor, I would have been locked in the library. Yikes. The blue-haired girl was the last one to be tutored, the rest of them have passed my final tests, made from the past year's exam, and now were happily drinking tea with the platinum blonde. I don't even want to think about returning. Then how about- Oh, my apologies. The blue-haired girl suddenly stood up, and ran to the platinum blonde. They talked about something, perhaps it would be better to have you stay overnight. Rejoice commoner, not every peasant gets a chance to. Before the platinum blonde could finish, I heard a message, whiskey, she is searching for you. Mo, with every second she gets angrier, I think. Then the signal disappeared. I could no longer pick up anything on the frequency. My sisters were silenced. I, I guess I will, will kill me. If I stay longer than I can. R understood. Should I give you a carriage then? PB. Nah. I want to stretch this pleasure for as long as I could. Well, there should be just a few more hours of tutoring. Then the empty-headed girl will solve my test, and I'll be off. Hey, no slacking. Spit that tea and biscuit, and come here. You ain't eating until you finish. The noble girls expressed their condolences to the blue-haired martyr, and we continued. Right when today's lesson ended, I checked her test. You know, I may not come back. I showed a below average result to the platinum blonde. I will take it into consideration. If you somehow make it out alive before the examination, please, be my guest. We both looked at the embarrassed blue-haired girl. No matter how much I try, Sometimes those noble girls are such dummies. Maybe I should ask Big Sis what to do in such cases. Though she will most likely mumble something like, who could have thought, or, 
I feel like I've seen it somewhere. I used every last minute of safety I could, and headed back to the hell. Creak the gate creaked, as I closed it behind. Now that I am on the enemy territory, I must be careful. Whiskey Tilda? Where are you Tilda? I heard a dreadful voice nearby. I hurried across the bushes, and made my way to the main building. Step 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 Whiskey Tilda? My sweet little sister Tilda. You Tilda? Have Tilda? Nowhere Tilda. To run to Tilda. The voice appeared to be right behind the wall. Bang through the five hole looked around the blue eye of the devil. When I was almost by the dormitories, I saw a shadow lurk around. The path was closed. I had to resort to the backup plan. I headed towards the jerk storm. Whiskey Tilda. You can hide all you want Tilda. But I will find you you Tilda. The voice sang near the jerk's dormitory. Soon I understood. She is herding me towards the library. Bang the door shut behind me. I was once again in the main building. Through the keyhole I saw how the shadow passed by. Sigh Whiskey Tilda. Kai -a. When the eye suddenly looked at me through the keyhole, I knew. I have to run. Creak bang I shut the door behind me, and held my breath. H-E-L-L-O. I raised my eyes and saw them. Under a mountain of reference materials and notes were sitting two ship girl like dolls. In their glass eyes were reflected two figures. Me, and her. Let's do our best Tilda, shall we Tilda? Yeah. The door creaked, as it shut. Kaya. Epilogue 8. Disparity. All sorts of emotions flashed through my mind. Joy. Excitement. Admiration. Anticipation. Unease. Fear. Dread. Terror. When Akagi-sama drew the sword, I immediately understood, that unless she goes easy on me, I will be turned into shreds. Yuri was a dangerous opponent, but her stance was still awkward. There were weak spots in her defense and attack. This being. There are no weaknesses. Just from her gaze I felt like she calculated the fight up to the point where I am defeated. Every move I would make will fall in the plan. Are we starting? I thought in anticipation. Even though she looks experienced, there are no people infallible. The move of her chin was barely visible. Yet, she didn't attack. Heck, she didn't even take a stance. But I had a premonition. A very bad one that is. I charged at her. And when I felt like the divine steel katana is about to connect to the woman's unguarded belly, she disappeared. Ping I barely managed to block the swing from behind. The goddess was already there, unfazed. I ducked below her odaki, and by using the sheer length of this, before my move was finished, I saw my head fly off. Ggha. Even though I was immediately revived, it was still terrifying. Never considered I could move it faster than you move? She nonchalantly brushed the blood off the blade. I, will remember. I stood up and prepared. I charged again. This time I aimed for the legs. Ping she didn't bother evading, and just blocked with the blade. I immediately diverted the attack to the side, and tried to pierce her other leg. Ping unsurprisingly, the sword was once again blocking. Swoosh the last thing my falling head saw was the apathetic look of her eyes. G-K-H-A-K-H-A. You never considered that your head is required for you to stay alive? Akagi Samo indifferently cleaned the Odaki. Why not go easy on me? Swoosh I immediately understood my mistake. She moved so fast, that it appeared like she didn't even move from the spot. An ant was crushed by an elephant. Ha ha ha. I better shut up. And move. A wise choice, for a change. She continued brushing the blood off the blade. Ping 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 ping. I attacked like crazy, only to be repelled without a chance. Then, my head flew off. G-E-H-A G-H-A. I feel like I could get used to that. Wait. Before she could get an idea, I shouted. Though it didn't look like her lukewarm attitude changed. This time I decided to approach her carefully. I stopped right at the distance where the Odaki shouldn't reach me. I properly aimed the strike, and charged. Ping before she retaliated, I fell back to the doubtfully safe distance. Ping when I tried attacking again, she blocked me, even before I approached her. All this time, the goddess didn't even bother with looking in my direction. Hey, 
Can you see what I am about to do? Like, your mind reading? You are too slow to have it required. A, ping 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 no matter how hard I tried. I was way too far from her. She intercepted me long before I could even try damaging her body. Swoosh in my next instance. I tried another way. Since attacking didn't work, I stood and waited, and waited, and waited. Ping Jesus, have some conscience. She suddenly attacked me. This time she was slow enough for me to at least see her after image, and react in time. Swoosh I have none. She nonchalantly answered. When I was revived, I changed my tactic once again. I started circling around her, in search for a spot to attack her from, though I couldn't sense any possibility. Finally, I stopped right in front of her. Hey, let's get this over with. You accepted your death? A. Eh? No. Wait. No. I mean, that let me try one last time, and if I can't, maybe we do something else? Like, chess? Or a tic-tac-toe? What about rock, paper, scissors? Very well. One last attempt. If you die, I will consume your soul. Are my words an empty sound to you? Yes, they are. You have ten seconds to attack. Why am I even talking, Ping when I charged at her? I managed to be intercepted in a way, that allows me to deflect the Odaki away, and continue attacking using this little gap. Ping 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 swoosh after I somehow managed to lose only a half of my neck, and stay alive for one more strike. I swung the katana at her own neck. T at the edge of my fading view. I saw how the katana was caught by her fingers, right by her neck, though. She caught it from behind the blade, passed. With her words said, I lost my conscience, and yet another cat life. Epilogue 9, Maximum Firepower When I woke up, I noticed that Akagi-sama was once again idling on the pedestal. Aside from several pools of blood, and stone rubble everywhere, nothing suggested that there was a fierce fight not long ago. The kids soon were cuddling and only when I stood up they noticed me. I am ready. I was full of vigor, and charged for a fight. Great. Come closer. A. I walked towards the pedestal. Pom until I hit something on my way. The something appeared to be a transparent dome, surrounding either me, or them. One punch cat. Boom despite using my full, unleashed strength on the serious level, nothing happened. You expected this, didn't you? Oh. But of course this Akagi-sama had absolutely no idea how this thing appeared here. For our sure. The Lilai kid soon rolled up her eyes, and in exaggerated way said how else would it appear. Gun F you. Bang 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 when I fired the guns. For a moment I saw the dome being damaged. I immediately remembered the magic shields I've encountered. How strong is this thing? Strong enough to be an obstacle. Little Myth's obviousness. The Lilai Kid soon waved her hand, and I felt like the power of the shield increased twofold. You. And she waved again. I quickly shut up my mouth and my thoughts, and continued thinking about what to do with this thing. Talk Bef you. The torpedoes somehow flew like rockets, and hit the shield. Boom 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 the entire salvo of torpedoes was much closer to breaking through this thing. Still. Not enough. Meanwhile, I felt like the fox girls were getting bored. Read my life was getting shorter. You want some explosions? There will be. I used the final ship. As high explosive gun turrets were deployed, I started thinking on how I want to do this. First things first. I just fired dummy shells. Boom 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 when the dust settled, I noticed two things. The shield has rippled a bit and Yuri is gone. Where is Yuri? I immediately asked her sister. What a nice toy you are. After you snap fired the guns she just had to quickly hide. I doubt she will return soon, so continue. A. It affects her but does nothing to you? If you were to throw a pebble at an ant, it would kill it. If you do this with an elephant. Yeah, got it. Still, it implies it can damage her. She rolled up her eyes again and muttered something. Boom 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 I continued pounding the shield. The problem is that I was only rippling it. 
not breaking it. You can't kill water by making circles on it, or, you can. An ingenious plan was brewed in my head. If you can't kill this thing with just a shot or two, then you need to do such a shot, that the ripple will turn into a breach. Like shooting water with a gun that will just splash the water out of the pond. As I started thinking, I noticed that Akagi-sama was at least looking at me with a squint, unlike her just looking around aimlessly. In the next hour I was synchronizing my shots with the airstrike, the barrage, and now unlocked torpedo salvo. The aircraft needed 30 minutes to arrive, the barrage's main guns needed almost 2 minutes, and torpedoes. Well, 10 minutes is a lot but it isn't their main issue. The main issue is them scattering so much, that there is a higher chance to hit something 500 meters away with a shotgun, than for a torpedo to hit the shield. Finally, I was ready. The MKI guns were aimed and ready, the aircraft were inbound. The torpedoes slowly glided above the ground, and the first shots of the barrage already left craters on the rock. Boom 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 wha kaboom kaboom the torpedoes were a bit late but two of them hit the shield. Boom boom and before the shell shock passed, I fired the main guns. Kaboom 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 aside from me suffering from the combined power of the 18 guns recoil, everything went great. The shield was broken, and the goddess even squinted with her second eye. Now, come closer. The Lily's squeaky voice called for me, and I stepped forward. Four sisters no 57. With four days left, we somehow managed to get Iowa switch her attention to the pressing matter of her research. Phew. I never thought we would live this through. Just what on earth happened to her to make us suffer like this? NJ? I guess nothing, aside from venting her frustration in a flashy way. We looked at Whiskey, whom we were dragging on our shoulders. Since she had the least score in Big Sis Mock Test, she suffered the most letting us two suffer less. Shall we just leave her in the room? We dragged her all the way to her dormitory, and I was finally done with my obligatory task of saving the dead one. Click click you just had to do it, didn't you? I looked indifferently at how New Jersey lifted the catatonic girl's skirt. I need to replenish my energy, you know? NJ, I thought you'd do it through those stupid games? Hey. Don't insult galages, let me degenerate like a normal person. NJ, says the one, who takes photos of her unconscious sister. Yeah, what's wrong with that? I sighed, and headed out, before the dragon turns her attention to me, right at the doorstep my way was blocked by New Jersey. Hey, 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 just where do you think you're going? Not before you. NJ, cut it. I'm really tired and I have no desire to fool around with you. Nay, no fooling round this time. How about we do something fun? She managed to pick my curiosity with her suggestion. Go ahead. You see. New Jersey patted my shoulder, and led me away. Like, seriously? I glared at New Jersey, after I saw what exactly she suggested for us to do. Come on. Give it a try. NJ. I'm going. Bye. Wait. She gripped me, and tried to drag me closer. When I saw a dragon in front of myself, I wondered if it will actually be anything exciting. But then New Jersey made an offer to make a one-day band. It was so stupid, that I just couldn't help it. Just look at it. It's a freaking reptile. Its peanut-sized brain is even smaller than yours becomes when you see a women bath. Wait a darn moment. What do you mean by that? NJ, so banding up with that is too freaking stupid even for you. That thing can at most be a material for a drum and a guitar. The dragon's apparent tremble did not make me change my mind, neither about its usefulness as a band member, nor as a bunch of materials. Geez, Mo, calm down. I just suggest we fool around. What's wrong with that? Seeing that she is still trying to creep her way, I had to point out the main reason. Are you nuts? I will never wear this. I pointed at two sets of bikinis, and see-through sailor uniform with open belly. TCH, it was worth a shot. 
I struggled hard not to kill her right here, right now. Well, I knew it will be like this. She showed me another set of clothes. After I changed, I noticed that the dragon has humanized, and was wearing New Jersey's custom made uniform. Once again, I was glad I didn't agree to wear it. Not that the stuff I wore is much better. At least this revealing suit does follow the Chiuni style I use sometimes. Alright, let's start Tilda. New Jersey herself wore nothing outrageous. There is nothing to look at in the first place. Unlike me, if the dragon would walk topless, nobody would notice them. Hey, Mo, don't look so proud of yourself. NJ, bang bang. I finger gunned her chest and she feigned being shot. So, bang bang, how about we start with some heavy metal? She patted a drum, and passed me the drumsticks. Fine by me. What's that thing gonna do? She will play guitar. NJ, botch it, and I'm gonna butcher you. Understood. The dragon obediently nodded. One, two, three, go. At NJ's command we began playing. If I were to say that everything went horrible, it would be a great understatement. Stand aside. The only thing that was saving the dragon's hide was the pop eyed dragon. Just remember, we two were so terrible that the commander tried to kick us out. Give her a chance. Her words didn't touch any of my heart strings, but they surely touched the gun control wires. Die together, then. Or, wait. She stepped aside immediately. Now that the wall of iron has stepped away, the dragon was facing me, the Grim Reaper. I. H. How about I just be a rug for your feet? D. Sounds good. Which parts of you have the best skin for that? G. Guys, how about we all calm down, and. N. J. I. Am. Very. Calm. Yeah, I see that. Still, you don't want to let I notice us, right? N. J. I concur. We produce a lot less noise than if you were to use those exploding things. D. Fine. We continued trying to play at least something enjoyable. In the end, nothing came out of this. The stupid lizard botched everything possible. Mo. Before you reap and tear. How about you look back at what we did today? NJ. I tried remembering. Yeah. What a nice day. Especially that moment when I used the dragon as my practice target. I aimed the MK7s, you don't have those days, do you? Ouch, ouch, ouch. I strangled New Jersey with my elbow. Well, maybe it was a nice family time with my Jack a big sister. Goot, nof, hat mho. I smiled, and gently whispered her. I was glad to have you spend some time with me, big sis New Jersey Tilda. I wish we could spend more time together Tilda, only you Tilda, and me Tilda. What a pity it is your last day of living. After hearing it, New Jersey robotically turned her head in the direction I glanced, and she noticed. Noticed how Whiskey was glaring at her in fury. I happened to inform her of what happened in the morning. You reap what you sow, New Jersey Tilda. Epilogue 10 Embracing the eternity I cautiously stepped forward. I had no idea what is going to happen. The certain someone was lazily observing my movements, and did not show any obvious reaction. The Lilai Kitsune was neither showing a vivid interest in me, nor was she bored. Suddenly, she jumped off the pedestal, and approached me. How does it feel, to be still alive? She was drawing circles on me with her little finger. It feels very good. Funny, or, silly. I do not enjoy seeing drama so your fooling around with women barely impressed me. Her voice was slowly getting lower, until I felt like she is about to strangle me. Still, a good show would overshadow a bad performance. The pressure disappeared, and she made a step back. I learned how to make a good show, so. I was about to start boasting at my excellent capabilities. You do know why watching you was anyway amusing? It was only because Akagi-sama was initially amused by your stupidity. Try better, or... She crossed her neck with a thumb. I gulped. I barely had an idea what the hell she is thinking about. Maybe she already made her mind, and was just berating me. 
Maybe she made her mind, but to kill me in the most entertaining way. After all, vixen are known for being hunters. And hunt consists of killing the prey for only 10%, and the rest, the 90%, are about planning, chasing, and in some cases, playing with a dying prey. He he he. The sudden giggling, and enchanting smile of the little fox made me freeze in horror. She looked at me with a mixture of mock, and delight. When I tried stepping back, I backed into an embrace of hers. I looked back, and saw how she, in her androgynous form, was watching me. Now it was a creepy mixture of trifle and tenderness. S so, why you are I in playful M mood? Instead of answering, she leaned closer to my ear, and breathed there. It took me a split second to realize that she is enticing me. WW. What, poor little virgin Tilda. You never experienced it after all this time Tilda. Even when I closed my eyes, she did not stop. Every her movement, every her whisper, and every her scent were aimed at seducing me. Just why me? Just because? She stopped leaning too close, however she still continued embracing me. Come on. I didn't agree to an unprotected hand-holding. Oh? So you agree to A, insert any lewd action. If it is protected? Shivers ran down my spine when I thought that I once again woke up a monster. I am not against procreation Tilda. Sometimes it is fun too Tilda. With every word I was closer to being swayed into something I may regret. I don't want to end up a toy for a black widow you know. A black widow? Mostly they die of old age. She tightened her embrace, and I was about to melt. After all, I am about to of Yuri with a pretty fox goddess. Yuri is love, Yuri is life, and so on. Poke however, when something poked my thigh, I understood that I almost fell into a trap. Perhaps after sensing my thoughts, Akagi-sama chuckled and released me. Too bad for you Tilda. If you get the honor of being a parent of my cubs Tilda. A, she slowly walked towards my front, and turned into her lily self. Akagi-sama thinks you are entertaining enough to live another day. A mixture of relief, and cursing crossed my mind. Both from fury that she was toying with me for so long, and from me being spared. S so, boss, where we're going now Tilda? I waited in feign excitement. After all, being someone's entertainment is not to my fancy. For now, you are going to wait. After a century, or two, I may remember of your existence Tilda. A, the goddess opened a rift, and I was sucked in there. A moment after I ended up in a dark space, the rift opened again. What waited for me when I creeped out? The time will tell. Announcement with this. The main storyline is over. I will continue posting the side story chapters for some time, and after Four Sisters is over, I will start posting the V1 rewrites. Keep your eyes open for updates. Four Sisters No 58. It was another calm day in my limbo. With just two days left until the deadline, I managed to finish my Sisyphean opus magnum of this semester, and was just idling in the library. When I was about to doze off, I heard somebody enter. Hey Tilda, how are you doing Tilda? New Jersey approached me, and by her smile I could guess that she is not here to offer her help. What's up? Hey, I, how about you help me out? Tilda, uh, why are you tucking your skirt? NJ, your help me out always means something bad. Ha? Huh? Hey, from since you, my older sister had such an opinion of me? NJ, ever since you reached the puberty. W well, whatever, as I said, I would like you to. NJ, no. Come on. NJ, no. Just. NJ, no. Come on, I, you are the closest person to me. NJ, whiskey? Fine. The second closest. NJ, mo? Fine. The third closest. NJ, computer, which you also consider a person. But the winter is approaching. What if it breaks? NJ, so? ARGH, so me balls, and name me after an admiral. Oh, for God's sake. At least hear me out. 
I raised an eyebrow and prepared to hear another outrageous offer. I, help me with studying. NJ, 0.01s. Iowa stood up. 0.02s. New Jersey is dragged to the table. 0.03s. New Jersey is seated, and a notebook is put in front of her. So, my dear sister, what are we going to study today Tilda? Holy shite. Uh, yeah. I wish to improve any and all marks I will have for the exam. I immediately set up everything necessary, and the studying session began. After a few hours of intense studying, New Jersey was ready for absolutely anything. Thanks he's Tilda. I'll be going Tilda. NJ, where are you heading? R, to the principals. NJ, you ain't going to trade panty shots for a good mark, right? She immediately started sweating buckets. Show me your phone. A trembling hand passed me the phone. From the first glance I confirmed my worst suspicions, confiscated. Later I need to download another audio copy of the Bible. Be but. I stopped her immediately. Go. Killjoy. N.J. As the passing storm of the indescendable dragon disappeared behind the door. I prepared to sleep for all of the sleepless nights I had. Then the door opened again. You there. Right from the doorstep. I was shouted at. There were two girls. The platinum blonde, and the blue haired girl. What? We have an urgent matter to attend to, which is why we will have your cooperation. PB, how about you ask somebody else? Impossible. I need a teacher, and you are the only teacher who can be spared at any time. I wiped the tears that streamed down my face, both from the pain of being shouted at, and the pain of being sleep deprived again. Go ahead. Good. The principal said we can hold the exam prior to the actual examination, if a teacher agrees to. The platinum blonde nodded in self-satisfaction. Wait a darn moment. I don't. You already agreed. I'm absolutely sure I didn't. But she ignored it and put a pile of papers on the table. All of the examination materials are here. We will be starting immediately. Both girls sat down, and started writing. My opinion was neglected. Wait a DA. We may have lost the papers while carrying them. A pity it would be found out only after the examination. I looked in the window, and started whistling. It's not my screw up, so I'm not the one to be blamed. I would class. We have our hands on the materials. Who wants to laugh our bottoms out while looking at the nonsense written Tilda? Count me in. Mo, sure thing. We after I'm done, I'll come Tilda. NJ. The examination took a bit less than six hours, since they were writing every exam available at once. When they were done, the platinum blonde took their answer sheets away leaving me with an entire pile of authentic examination questions. That evening we had a lot of laughing at the questions there, and how they needed to prove that the world isn't flat disc on top of three turtles. Neither of us needs those materials to actually pass the exams, so why bother Tilda? Four sisters no 59. The exams are today. After the lunch we all will go and start scribbling until the late evening. Ha, huh. I don't want to. Relax, it's just an exam. Iwa was writing something in her diary. For the breakfast the four of us decided to gather, and eat together. Since it may be the last chance for some to talk today, the restaurant was filled to the brim. For some it's just an exam. For the rest of us, it also includes writing it. I glared at our miss teacher, who only needs to feign paying attention to the classroom. I'll just roll the pencil today. Mo was gluing some stickers to a pencil. Scribble luckily, the freak was too busy to pay attention to anybody. Maybe she went crazy again, so I don't want to approach her in any way. Ha, huh, so boring. If you don't want to write an exam or idle, then what do you even want to do? Big Sis shut her diary, and started pulling lemonade bottles out of her bag. Thanks. I too have no idea. I just think I'm burnt out right now. I need something exciting, or maybe something extreme. I glanced at the freak but she was too engrossed in studying. You disgusting, perverted, inattentive. 
MHM, NJ, what are you looking at? MHM. She shrugged her shoulders, and returned to writing. This bastard didn't even care. I drank the lemonade, and stared in the window. Oh, wow, is that the prince? Suddenly, Mo's remark got my attention. I turned around, and saw how the crown prince and his fiancée entered. The girl was tugging him towards a table, which was immediately cleared of the students. My my, being young sure is fun. Yeah, you say that like you are 150 years old woman, we are still young and full of vigor. And very photogenic. Mo, speak for yourself. I did. Mo, all three of us grinned at how lovey-dovey they were. Still, I felt like things are not going as good as they should have been. Excuse me. I stood up, and headed in the royal couple's direction. I entered the view of the fiancé, and with my gestures beckoned her to approach. We exited the restaurant and found a good spot to talk. Is everything okay? No, arg. I, I invited him to have a lunch but, but I have no idea what to do. When I told him how glad I am to have him with me, it is goo that you started paying me more attention, and stopped visiting all those girls. He smiled dryly, and looked away. CPF, this ungrateful. You did tell him how much you love him, right? Of course I did. It's not that I don't want to see you, I just feel like you should be given enough space. However, you must pay me attention, and spend more time with me to strengthen our bond, CPF, and he? He said I shall not violate the obligation. Ark. I hugged the poor girl while clenching fists. Should I get to this scumbag? I will strangle him. Ara, so this is how it went? Both of us almost had a heart attack when we heard a voice nearby. Big Sis was listening attentively. Get lost. I may have an idea what went wrong. Yeah, and what was it? CPF, let's pretend I am the crown prince. Tell me something. Yeah. We exchanged glances but the girl still had no idea what to do. Just say you invite her for a dinner. Why you? H how dare you disregard the time we are required to spend together. I demand that you go with me for a dinner. CPF, Whiskey, have you noticed anything wrong? Yeah, nay. How I saw it, you, you fail to fulfill the terms of our marriage contract. And that is why you must eat with me or else my honor will be tarnished. Guess what? It ain't working well. Yeah, and you suggest? Let's do it. Whiskey away. Invite me for a dinner, like you do it with Angie. She asked me. Hey, I've got nobody to chat with while eating, so haul your way to the cafeteria. What you're smirking at? It's just that every sane person is unavailable right now. Now get moving. Do you see anything weird? Yeah, no. CPF, how I saw it, since I've got nobody to talk to right now, I'll have you accompany me for a dinner, as rude as yours, but at least she specified that she wants the person to spend time with her, not just fulfill duty, now, big sister's advice is, yeah, who cares, let's just go and teach that dance, Iowa immediately grabbed me by the collar, and started dragging me back to our table. I hope you got the point. Good luck Tilda. Yeah. A few minutes later the girl approached the table of the prince. You foo foo Tilda. We paid utmost attention. The fiancé was blushing, and clearly stuttered while trying to talk. Still, she succeeded, because we clearly heard her invitation after she accidentally shouted. H how about we go on a date? And not because I like you or anything. I tease just, cut. The entire restaurant pretended not to hear her shouting, and proceeded like nothing happened. The feigned shrug off was turned impossible. After the prince's reaction, he stood up and approached her. Then he suddenly picked her up in a princess carry, and gently hauled her outside. Damn, I wish I could experience something like that. The lovey-dovey couple didn't return even after the exams have passed. Four sisters no sixty. Three days after the exams, we all were gathered in the courtyard to hear the results. As the good old tradition, a long meaningless speech was given, 
and then we finally prepared to hear what we all came here for once again. Thank you for all of your hard work. Let us greet the students, who put the most effort into studying in this semester. The principal beckoned the best geeks to show up. Around ten people entered the stage, among them were the platinum blonde, and the crown prince with his fiancée. Why the hell did we even study? Mo, of course to keep on improving. Self-improvement is always important for... Yeah, cut the C, I self-improvement is not something that must be taught. It did not concern you when you visited all those trainings back then. Yeah, first the principal, now the students. Another bunch of speeches that were beyond boring. Should we go rock the stage? Sounds fun. Mo, stop right there. Before we managed to slip away, Iwa grabbed us, and returned us to the place where we were standing. Whiskey Tilda. My lovely cute little sister Tilda. Help us Tilda. With Whiskey on our side even I will have to stand down. You, stay away from me. You pervert. She did not even look at me. All of her attention was on her phone. By the time our attempt at saving everyone from boredom was finally stopped. The people on stage finished with their speeches, and it was supposed to be the end. I thank all students for their hard work. However, there is also one special case. As you may know, the best student of a semester gets to make one wish from the academy. To finish our ceremony, I would like to invite the best student, the one who gave their everything to study hard, and successfully pass all of the examinations with the highest mark. Please. Applaud to. Before the principal finished, the exasperated audience started applauding, just to finish this torture of a ceremony asap. Applause the principal had to resort to voice amplification magic to make him hearable. Miss New Jersey. And then, cook 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 what the heck? Couldn't you at least go already? With whiskey's kick, I was given enough motion to start walking. Let us thank Miss New Jersey for giving her best on the examination, and... The principal trembled when the entire courtyard glared at him. Just say your words and let's move on. I grinned. First of all, let me express my gratitude for all of the help I received during this period. Whiskey's panties. Thank you Tilda. While she was absolutely petrified by her rage and embarrassment, I hurried to finish. Dear Principal, you may remember our bet, Tilda. The Principal gritted his teeth, and started casting magic. I would like to see a show of your magic, Tilda. Please, Tilda. Time was of the essence. The estimated outbreak of whiskey was within 30 seconds. Just how did this person become the best student? We made a bet, that if I managed to become the best, he will comply with one request of mine. Strong wind. Simultaneously with the magic being casted, I pulled out my phone, and started taking pictures. Ten seconds until whiskey kills me. Click 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 three seconds until the MK7s turn me into a Swiss cheese. I finished my harvest, and rushed towards the kill zone, towards whiskey, whose fury was. At this point, immeasurable. One second. You, just dial a car. Before all of the dots in her brain connected and I was turned into a floating scrap, I picked her up in Princess Carrie, and hurried away. Once again, Whiskey was successfully immobilized. The phone was switched to silent mode. By the time Whiskey came to her senses, she was sat at a table somewhere in a forest. In front of her were hot and yummy pork ribs with beer, and a bowl of sweets. Ha! Huh? She was stupefied by this, so I had to explain. My little sister wished to be Princess Carried Tilda, and if I am to do it, then why not turn it into a date, with just two of us Tilda? W well, I will turn a blind eye to it, but only this time. She started stuffing herself with the food completely oblivious to my satisfied expression. My little sister is so cute when she is eating like a hamster tilde, and she is so cute when she tries to pout, while also smiling from ear to ear tilde. MMM tilde. This cute little sister of mine, 
who completely forgets about everything when food is presented to her tilde, thought I, while taking pantsa shots from under the table with no view obstruction, it was worth it, removing her skirt while she was distracted tilde, say triple underscore a apostrophe tilde, pork steak train is entering tilde, triple underscore a tilde, you foo 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 tilde. Announcement The new page for the novel was created at https colon slash slash www.scribblehub.com slash series slash 415547 slash I died and was reincarnated as Warship in A Fantasy World Volume Rewrite and Volume Slash V4 Release to all those who still have interest in this novel, Ship Girls, and want to know what would happen to the MC. The V4 is now released. Find it here, https colon slash slash www.scribblehub.com slash series slash 415547 slash I died and was reincarnated as Warship in A Fantasy World Volume Rewrite and Volume Slash. End of Block 6